Welcome back to another episode of Black Man Do Talk, where we have overdue conversations from a black man's perspective. It is your boy, Caleb Edward Lee Berry. It's your host, Street Hymns. And we got a special guest in the building. Talk to us. What's up, guys? My name is MJ Pittman, Let's and I'm excited go. to be hanging out with you guys today. Yes. Thanks so much for the invite. I'm yes, excited sir. to have the conversation. Absolutely, absolutely. That's awesome, man. Welcome, man. We glad you got to come through, man. Hey, for sure. You know, uh, Street and I have been talking about it for a while. I know you about to go on tour, yeah. and when I saw you yeah. at um, Ezekiel and Preston's thing, I was like, we've been talking about it. <laughs> you about mentioned it. I was like, I gave you my word. Indeed. That I would pull up. Indeed. Uh, Indeed. That word was given about a year and some change ago. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. It's a little bit. But I am a man of my word. <laughs> I am a man of my word. You know what I mean? <laughs> May not come when you want. Oh, but it's on time. <laughs> but I'll be there right on time, okay? Indeed. Here we go. How's what's up, man? How was y'all's weeks? Man, it was good, man. Um, I got a little bit more left before I'm ready for the tour. So okay. I'm good. To, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Be good. Um, mentally, spiritually, and literally. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. What about yours? How was your week, Caleb? It was a good week overall. Uh, my car was stolen. Uh, wow. But, uh, wait, wait. Run it back again. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what in the Grand Theft Auto is... <laughs> Yeah, man, no, I got jacked. Tony. But um, Tony. it's weird, man, because yeah. like when it ha- when I realized that it happened, I was like, "Huh, okay, God." And I wasn't angry. I wasn't frustrated. I was just like, "Well, this is unfortunate, but you allowed it, so we go see what you do from here on out." You know what I'm saying? And so, but yeah, literally since uh, I think it was like Wednesday when it happened, every day that I woken up, I was like, "It's weird that I'm not frustrated at this or angry at this." You yeah. know what I'm saying? It was just like this weird piece that I got. I was just like, "All right, Lord, like you, you got me. I'm yeah. with you, bro." And so I'm just like, yeah, "Here, here we are." Yeah, my car and has so, been stolen before. Yeah, it was also a Nissan. It was a Nissan too. It was a Maybe Nissan. It was a Nissan. Nissan. But Man. it was a, but it was in Atlanta. I didn't know. I mean, in Atlanta, it was just like, oh, okay, come on. You know what I mean? But in Plano? <laughs> no, so mine was at it was in Trinity Groves. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it was in Trinity Groves, though. Oh. It was during the day. My car was like in the middle of the parking lot. Oh. Mind you, it's literally just in the middle. Everybody oh, else's car was kind of like around. <laughs> Anybody else got a Nissan? Huh? <laughs> hey, what hey, bro, he got oh, somebody no, plotting him like, I Maybe. can't wait till he park. It's like, because I'm about to get him. He got hey, me now. Yeah, but yeah, no, nah, like, uh, other than that, man, like, it was uh, it's, it was a good week. Uh, but in that time, though, it was so cool uh, that as I'm, like, you know, waiting for the cops to get there, I had, like, five of my homies just pull up at the coffee shop. And we That's just, good. like, talked and, you know what I'm saying? And just, Yeah. yeah. I got some uh, website stuff done for a friend of mine. Not done, but like pieces of it done, logos done. I got work done. Hey, shout out to the fact that you're still able to get work done. <laughs> Look. He's like, hey, I know my car is stolen. Yeah. Let me knock this graphic design out. Really quick. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all better look to Jesus what? for that one. Because if you would have called me two months ago, oh, my God. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Shout out. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah it would have been completely it's, Bro, yeah, it's completely literally, literally I'm... I'm Bro, I'm, y'all see me? I'm whipping in my mama's car right now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, one of my family members actually crashed my car. Yeah. So for the past five months, I've not had a car. We're still waiting on the insurance to actually give us the money from that. It's mm-hmm. supposed to be like seven thousand, and then they hit us up like, "Hey, we'll give you three. It's like, um, so excuse me. Uh, uh, we're not playing spades. You're not finna bitch. renege us. I'm <laughs> like, not finna. Ain't no renege. You can't renege this. Shoot. Yeah, nah, yeah, it's you, real. You did it before. You can do it again. Yeah, you, better, yeah, you, better, on, you better run that back. Run that back. <laughs> you Bring told us seven, seven G's. So that. <laughs> run, run that. Run that. It's like y'all ain't even trying to compromise. Y'all straight up just it's like, nah, went we below the half, the lower half. It's like y'all know good and well y'all could have done more than that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean they didn't even go half. Yeah, they, they went. They went the lower half. They, they, they like it was like, oh, you could. 
Like 3,500 would have been like at least it's like 50%. They just kind of threw a number out there. Yeah. The only, the only type of car I can get, no, it's, it's just, that's, that's the game, bro. The only type of car I can get for like 3K right now is the one you see driving right next to you. And like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Xavier Alejandro's driving. It got a little, the chalk on the joint. Like, hey, buy my car for yeah. two, two 2,500. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's going like, to cost bro, you more maintenance. Yeah, man. Dominique, bro, like, hey, let me let me put my boy Dominique up for the, for the – he got the number on the back. It Call did. me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Trying yeah. Trying to get that job. <laughs> Cash Buy the only. joint from Dom. <laughs> Cash only. Cars yeah. are expensive these days too, yeah. bro. Like, you know, people always talk about, like, cars being, like, depreciating assets. And I was looking at, like, the car that we got stolen, which was a 2012 Nissan Murano. I bought it probably in 2015 for – I think it was like twenty something thousand dollars, mm-hmm. like maybe like twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Bro, that car on the market today could still fetch like seventeen thousand. What? It's wild, dog. I don't know what is going on in this economy, but like, oh, shit, this- I, I, will, I will say they 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 say the older cars are just built. They they're built to last, yeah. not built to replace parts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like especially you go back yeah. to like the 70s, the 60s, like they got like that was tin me. on them. They got like steel. The that steel was, is like I could get hit. Yeah, and you good. Sand that joint off, you good to go. You good. I'm now it's like, hey, you get hit. Hey, replace the part. Yeah, six hundred dollars. Yeah. Most of the stuff that was built back in them days are like good. Our grandma still got the stuff that she had when she was 17. It's like <laughs> not anymore. Indeed. How was your week, bro? Talk to us, Mike. My week. Let me try to remember it. <clears throat> uh. I think that my week was 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 really solid, man. Like I got a chance to celebrate a, a homie's birthday. Uh, mm-hmm. So me and Amanda, my wife, we went out. Have y'all ever been to Nick and Sam's? Mm-mm. Nick yes. and Sam's. Nick and Sam's. It's in Dallas. Now you know. It's a restaurant. Make sure, it is a restaurant. It's it's fire, delicious. Okay. Now it is it is top tier. So. So bring your Amex or, uh, you know, like make sure, you, you gotta, know. Gotta, we got a few stars on you know, it. You know, it, it's, it's definitely. Salt Bay Cousin work there. You yeah. Said what? yeah, 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 yeah. He it's, don't do this, he do this. I did have the oh, best, I, I did have the best steak of my life. I had the best steak oh, of my life. Oh, wow. That's, oh, that's, a, that's a, wait, that's a major statement. It is, especially because I grill. Yeah, dry, it was like a 45 day dry age, like tomahawk Ooh. joint. Woo! With oh, a yeah. truffle butter on top. Are you the still tr- vegan though? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Okay. Yeah. So that's not even. That doesn't even sound good. Uh, <laughs> sounds disgusting. <laughs> like, like he cringing on the inside right yeah. now. Yeah. Like, do you like? Do you miss not being vegan, or have you just gotten used so to I'm, it? I, I tell you, I'm a dietary vegan, so like 98 percent of what I do is like vegan. Um, but like, if I'm, for example, when I, when I, last time I did it, I was, I was in Colombia, and I'm like, hey, whatever they serve me, I'm gonna eat. You know what I'm saying? So they served me fish. Yeah. Like, that's like, I knew for a fact, whatever they gave me, they meant and they appreciated what they had. Yeah. And they were willing to share it. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm not going to be here. Like, hey, y'all take the salad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, yo, you, y'all are serving me fish. I'm going to appreciate for sure. yeah. the harvest that y'all for are sure. providing for me. So I'm going to eat the fish. You know Praise God. I ate the fish. Yeah. You know I had a lot of yuca. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, was it um, cassava? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and it was, it was good, you know? But like, other mm-hmm. than that, like, yeah, I will eat something, but the only time I eat it is if it's kosher, like non-pork, non-shrimp, uh, crab, et cetera. And then if it's, uh, if it's something I feel like I'll only experience in that time frame. That makes sense. So it's yeah. like 98% of the time you're vegan, but you're not like such a staunch purist. Yeah. I'm that not, makes sense. That's I'm how not. me and my wife feel about shopping at Target. <laughs> 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 it's just like wow. once they started coming out with all their crazy stuff it was just like all right we're not shopping at target anymore but if we happen to be you know in, in a certain area. part of the country <laughs> this is hilarious like like my grand Wait, so you will put walmart over target right now yes. yeah bro what? absolutely no hey bro i mean it, uh, Wal- yeah is walmart that no argument Target's just better. When was the last time? Well, you know, I'm, I'm not even going to, like, deny that. It's just that I feel like you vote with your dollars. And, like, Target has been on some, like, weird stuff over the last, like, okay. year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. True story. Can I get an amen from over here? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so, so. I, 
Uh, so, um, so yeah, me and my wife were talking about that the other day because when we were on the way to Nick and Sam's, actually, mm. she like there was like this gold hair clip. She wants to like pin her hair up or something like that, and um, and she had lost her gold hair clip and like she thought like oh I had gotten it from Target mm. and I we're on our way like you know we're on a time frame blah 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 and we had this conversation last week like. Okay, like how serious are we about the whole Target thing? Um, wow. And we ended up at Walmart anyways, and indeed. she got and we, she got what she needed. But indeed, you know, indeed. it's Target veganism, tomato, tomato. Indeed. Literally. Okay, so <laughs> for the people, for the people, um, let them know a little bit about who you are, what you're passionate about, and we're gonna get into the topic. Yo. Okay, so I'm MJ, and I own a company called Simple Money Academy. Facts. And Simple Money Academy is a financial literacy company that is licensed by colleges and universities to help teach their students, predominantly first generation low income students, financial literacy curriculum. So when people hear like that I, I like teach about money and financial literacy, like they're thinking like, oh, Dave Rams, and you sit down with people and do their budgets and blah, blah. It's just like, no, I don't do that. Uh, I don't work with people on an individual basis. Uh, when people need my help on an individual basis, I just answer their questions for free. Like, that's you not even... You did it before this. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I, my clientele are, cl are colleges, universities, YMCAs, Boys and Girls Clubs, that's you good. know, um, after school programs and, and organizations that are typically grant funded that are looking to fulfill certain objectives. And I help them fulfill those objectives by teaching financial literacy. Been married to my wife, Amanda, now for... Uh, we are going on 10 years of Come marriage. On. Press a button. Yes. A button. That's right. So, uh, so super, super geeked about that. I have two beautiful children, mm -hmm. Elijah, who is seven, Lily, who is four. Uh, go to Embassy City Church here in Irving. Nice. And I am on the teaching team there. So nice. I've done a sermon or two. And you were, uh, you know what I'm saying? And I play, yeah. and I play keys. Play I, play keys. I play keys. Come on. I play keys. I, I play I keys. Just, I didn't meet him as a, as a keyboard player. And so I, I was, you know, I was worshiping at ABC one day. I was like, Wait, is that Mike? I was like, MJ, what you doing back there? <laughs> I was like, he was taking us there too. Hey, listen, I've been, come on. I've been playing keys for like over twenty years, so it's oh, a, wow. it's a, it's a part of my life that's. It, I just feel like whenever I was in college, my guidance counselor was just like, Michael, you're just all over the place, and uh, I took offense to it then, and now I'm just like, thank God, I'm all yeah, over the place, indeed. you know, because yeah. it, I feel like it makes you a more multifaceted, well-rounded yeah. individual. So that's encouraging to hear. Yeah, yeah, Somebody for sure. They told me that it was like, hey, you you do a lot, but they made a face to where it was like a negative thing. Yeah, and I was like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the... I said that to me last week. You said who? No, no, no. We said you don't you don't know how to rest. That's a difference. Oh, that's different. <laughs> that's a major difference. <laughs> you do like two things like 24 hours a day. Yeah. yeah okay. Oh, oh, straight in like that. Yeah, straight yeah. in like that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. West didn't like that. Y'all got me. Y'all got me. Y'all got me. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. But I'm I'm super excited to be here, man. You know, I'm yeah. I'm a definitely like I'm the type of person to where I, I keep it real, I keep it a stack. Normally, when my wife is with me, she filters me. You do love Amanda? She's awesome. I love okay. her too. Um, that's great. And so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we have fans in the audience. Yeah. You know it, it wasn't like, I love you guys. She said, I love Amanda. So I'm still, I know about the two kids too. Uh, yeah, for they sure. Cool, but yeah. Amanda. And I'm but familiar, Amanda. and I already know who you are by proxy of Amanda, but I actually just love Amanda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's cool though. It's cool though. So normally Amanda so normally Amanda filters me, uh, but she's not here today. So you with the guys. Yeah, you with the guys. I was with some guys, so hey, hey. Well, you know, y'all can Y'all can just splice whatever y'all need to splice hey, afterwards. say less, say less. I definitely want to, you know what I'm saying, um, get into a little bit about, like, just the whole financial literacy aspect of things, you know, because I got a low you can use it right now. Yeah. Um, but along with that, so my passion behind this topic, man, I remember I was at a dinner table with a group of well-established men, and we were all chopping it up, and these men are men, after spending a weekend with them, it was at like a conference and retreat type thing. Um, 
I was just highly encouraged, man. And, and, and it was one of those things, I mean, man, like, these are men who are also building up other men as well. Mm. Sure. But at that dinner table, we had some real conversations. And I remember one of the men who I'm, I'm, I'm pretty cool with and close to, um, he was unaware at the fact that in my perception, what I saw in a lot of the marriages, especially in a lot of millennial couples, they weren't actually friends with their wives. And it wasn't a thing of like, they don't love their wives, they don't love their kids, they don't love their family. But I was, I was like, bro, like from what I'm gathering in the couples that I'm talking to, these couples ain't friends. He said, stop saying that, Street. That's not true. So literally, he, he, he looked around at table. He said, come on, y'all. Are y'all best friends with your wives? And they was like, Nah. <laughs> Dang. He was like, he's like, he's like, he's like, I love my wife, I love my kids, but we got nothing in common. Mm-hmm. That's tough. And like, like, That's tough. and mind you, like, it's it's one of those things. Now, mind you, it's it's not just a one sided thing. It is it's two people that are in a place of now, and and, and the the tough part about it for me was y'all can review the podcast from the past year. You know, I'm somebody who really really held on. Um, the values of biblical unity, commitment, um, and responsibility as a man and holding up the contract. And so the things I'm looking for isn't foundational in love, isn't foundational in all the, what I would call things that waver. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, right, right. love, right. as I've gathered from married couples, is something that comes and goes. But as I looked around at those men, mm as powerful as they were in my eyes and as impactful as they were in my eyes, when they talked about the unity, I was like, I see the face of somebody who also is struggling in marriage. You know, that's life. But somebody who's a best friend with their wife and somebody who's on the track of where I was going of just like, Hey, commitment, responsibility, and vows. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want that. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. straight up. I was yeah. like, if I had the option, yeah. I would prefer being best friends yeah. with my with my partner because I'm like, like I see it, and the best way I can describe it, they look stuck. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's like, hey, I'm honoring God right now, mm-hmm. and that is the primary thing. Yeah, and yeah. as much as I love what is going on, they're not in love with mm-hmm. what's going on. Yeah, and so. Man, I just want to talk about like like I remember scrolling through the comments because you did the um the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So shout out for that. That was that was very fire. Um and I looked at the comments and like the top comment was like, the way he looks at his wife, it's like that man is smitten. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time he sat there, mind you, they're already booed up. He sat there like this. All right. Like, hey. Yeah. Yeah. The whole time I'm like if I ain't ever seen a more supportive man in my life. Yes, sir. sir. You feel yes, me? sir. And you so, can keep that over the years. Like, yeah, talk about the sure. longevity of that. I know it, it, throughout your conversation, I would love to hear how, how you kept that consistency. So, so, so was it something where you developed a friendship post or y'all were already, because y'all are like high school sweethearts or no? No, we got married in college. We met in okay, college, college and got married in college. college. So timeline is met sophomore year of college. Uh, started dating second semester, uh, beginning in January of sophomore year. Got engaged December, so we dated for 11 months, then were engaged six months after that, and got married before our senior year. You did the right side. I love the yeah. fact that you know this timeline, too, because I know oh, yeah. a lot of men that be like, bro, I don't even remember. <laughs> he, he probably had to tell us so much. This- <laughs> well, you know, but, but, I, but I, I don't know, man. I feel like some men just like just lean into incompetency, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. they just like, that. it's just like, bro, it's actually not that hard for you to remember. <laughs> <laughs> like, for sure. Like, many times men, like, many times wives are frustrated with their men because they feel like their men aren't intelligent and can't keep up with them. And it's like, well, one of the best ways you can lead your wife is first off just, being knowledgeable about something that is important, like the timeline of y'all's relationship. But you know, like, men, 
Uh, they, <laughs> <laughs> hey, so first of all, you can say it on this podcast. <laughs> if there was ever a podcast, you can say what you was going to say. Yes, trust me. If it's allowed in the space table, it's allowed here. Trust me. Look. <laughs> He was buzzing. Yep. <laughs> they be out here, bro. <laughs> they be out here like they be out here and they know and they know they know the starting right tackle for the Dallas Cowboys. That's facts. Yeah. They know like politics, every they, they know politics, stuff, yeah. they know Drake lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't know your wife's favorite flowers. Yeah. You you don't know, like, you don't know. If you were to look at a series of seven pictures of seven different kitchens, you don't know which one your girl would like the most. Mm. Is she mid-century modern? Is she farmhouse? Is she more like, <laughs> like, mid, like the reality, <laughs> like the game is actually studying your wife. Yeah. Sure. My wife, Amanda, feels like I know her better than she know herself. Shh. There'll be things to where I mean, I remember, I mean, there was simple things. Like one time, uh, like last week, she went to the room for something. We had just got done working out. When she went in the room, I went to the room. I went to the top of the closet because my wife is four foot 11. And I went to the top of the closet. I grabbed a protein shake, put it on the counter. She said, and then she walked out of the room. She came back into the kitchen. She was like, hey, babe, I was wondering if you can give me a protein shake. It's already made. <laughs> it's already there. It is. She was like, did you get this for me? I was like, yeah. Because I know how to anticipate your needs because I've studied you. I know who you are. And so, um, and so whenever that's the case, it creates such a high degree of intimacy. It creates a high degree of vulnerability. It creates... It creates a high degree of, you don't know anything, Siri. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it creates a high degree. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you made a freak. You know? Um, you know, it, it just, and, it, and, it, and the reality is that, like, men and women are so different. Yeah, that's true. As men, like, uh, we like to see figures, and, you know, we like to see... You know, some men like booties and boobies and titties and whatever. You know what I mean? Like men like different things, you know, and like that's why, um, you know, a lot of men, you know, you go on their discover page and it's just thirst traps all yeah. over the place. Right. Mm. But actually, women are actually different. So me and my wife are having a conversation about this. And it's like a, per a man's uh, riz, you know, a man's like intelligence, his competency how much money he made, you know, how much he's in the gym. Like, those actually, uh, in the words of my wife, when we were, we were having this conversation, she was like, uh, what did she say? For women, y'all probably able to help me out with this because I don't know the lingo, but she's like, for women, like, face card can't be beat, or something like that. Like, it's like, a, it's about the face card, right? Face card don't decline, thank you. Oh, wow. Face card don't decline. Yes, Boss. for sure. But guess what? I bet y'all as men, what, what as, men, as, men yeah, I, I, as men, that's what I was about to say. I bet, I bet as men. Y'all don't even know what that even I, means. I, I, I don't even know what it means, but I wrote it down. Yeah. Uh, but, I ain't never but, heard it before in my life. But, but, for, but so that's the case for women. Uh -huh. But for men, like the face card and like how even you look is, is still important because the woman wants to be attracted to you. But there are so many other like ancillary factors that are in there. It's like, okay. Is Let it me, a confidence thing? Confidence is like one of the many factors. So like, bro, it's crazy. So like, I mean, my wife told me this and I was just like, wow. I'll, so it's like, let's just say, I'm just keep a spade to spade. We just talking. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, talk. let's just say you see a, a, a girl, you know, everybody is, um, you know, made in the image of God, loved by God. And based off of your perception and experience to somebody else, she's a 10. But to you, let's just say that she's like a five You played that or really six. safe, bro. I love it. Keep yeah. Going. Let's just say you're like, she's, to, to, and, and your, for your perspective, for your taste. I like it. <laughs> for your taste. She's a 10. She's a, no, no, no. For, to other people, she's a 10. She's an adjustable eight. But, but to you, but to you, adjust, she's like a, adjustable eight. To you, she's like a five six. Okay, five. Okay. Let's just say she's like five, five, five six. Five you know, like uh, five and a half. Well, like there are certain things. Maybe the way she does her hair, yes, or maybe yeah. the way she does her makeup, or things like that. To where, like, uh, to where she can like maybe go up to like a seven or adjustable, you know whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Uh, 
just based off of that. Women are, from what she tells me, are actually different. I've never been a woman. But what she tells me is <laughs> actually guy. different. To where there's a guy who could actually have like a, be like a five, six in the face, but because he's confident, because he goes to the gym and has like a solid body, because he um, is like good with people and good in the room, like he could go from like a five to like an eight, eight, eight and a half, nine. And I'm like, what are you telling me right now? I do not understand. I do, but I believe the term is medium ugly. It, whatever you want to call it, yeah. you know what I mean? Like muggly, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but, muggly, but I like, never but like, muggly eight. That's crazy. You a muggly it's, eight. It's, it's, a muggle. It's wild. <laughs> it's it is absolutely wild. So it's like really interesting um, because as men, like you actually have to like focus on different things than you would want the person you're interested in to be focused that's on nice. in a way. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a very interesting, like for any men who are going to listen to this, like that's game because I learned this after 10 years of being with my wife and like I see a lot of people out here in these streets who are just like, I ain't nothing in the streets. You know what I mean? I'm just like, well, I don't know if people even know what they're looking for. Okay, so I got a question. Oh, you about to tell me? Yeah, the, okay. the only question, the, the question that I had was, and it may be going, and going to another direction, but like, what were some of the questions you was asking your lady in the beginning, other than what's your favorite color? Uh, I was like, what would, I, what would our purpose be together? Because mm -hmm. I had a big vision for my life, yeah. and I had to make sure that that person who was going to be with me would like go with me, mm -hmm. you know? I think that, um, and for her, that like attracted her because mm -hmm. I think that w like there's a, there's a quote in business and leadership that says, weak people need to be led, strong people want to be led. Mm -hmm. So as a man being the leader, I was like very clear on like, this is what I want to do and accomplish for in my sure. life. And so I was like, what is our purpose together other than just like being together and looking good, yeah. you know? Um, what, is, what are the dynamics with your family? Because like, for me, family was a piece. Yeah. yeah. I knew based off of, cause like, if you've never seen my wife before, she is absolutely gorgeous. And like, I knew that based off of just that alone, I was gonna have blind spots. Mm -hmm. So very early, even in the relationship, I was bringing her around my people like, very early, For sure. like within the first <clears throat> month, because I'm just like, they're going to see something that I don't see. And I would rather them see it early than later. We talked about that several times. You know, so it's just like, I don't have, I don't want to wait and actually build like a really like great relationship with you and then introduce you to my parents nine months later. What if like yeah. they look at you and they're like, oh, this is trash. Then now, you know, that we waste, waste a lot of time, you know, yeah. so. I think that um, there was that piece as well. Obviously, Faith Walk, you know, sure. and where they were, uh, where she was in her faith. Mm -hmm. um, and she was just like really getting into her Faith Walk at that point in time because she like had left the church for a while and was in like Buddhism and all, she was in all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, now she got a whole ministry and everything, which is Come incredible. On, but, um, you know, she was just all, all, what did you say? Uh, oh, we have more Amanda fans in the audience. That's Indeed. great. Indeed. Um, <laughs> Tell us more about Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have an Amanda session. Here. Yeah, for sure. Maybe maybe next time I'll tell her, yeah, oh, yeah, you should come yeah, with. You got well, some, some people in here. And we so, um, Yo, you know. It's crazy. I, I remember I went to Embassy one time and uh, we, we, we fuck out like multiple times like throughout the years, right? Yeah. And so, like, I think you came up to me. We just chopping it up. I was thinking something to kids like that. And one of my close friends was like, how do you know the Pippins? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, uh, we went to Colorado together, I think, you know what I'm saying? A couple yeah. times, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I love her. I've been following her for so long. <laughs> it's like, could I just say hi? I was like, would you just, just wave? I don't know what, what, what you want to say. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I think, I think that um, I, yeah, we, it's always very encouraging. Indeed. Like, we're very... Like, I think we're very friendly people. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> up to us. yeah, say, hey. for sure. That's like, true. even in conversations like this, it's just like, I try to be as, I don't know, as real as possible. Absolutely. Um, how, I, do you, what, how are those moments? Because I've had this happen a couple of times where you can see somebody who wanted to talk to you, but they're just sitting there like staring. <laughs> um, I think that like normally it's kind of like one of two, two things. Like 
you know, when we, at, at embassy, you know, Amanda particularly probably gets stopped, you know, I, maybe once a week or so, unless sure. we're just like on the move, you know? Sure. Um, so normally what happens is like people will either like stop you or they'll just like not do anything. You don't even know that they see you. Sure. You know what I mean? But there's not like the awkward, like, like stare across the room, you know? I don't feel like we're even like that, I'll use this word like famous. Yeah. Like, like I don't, I don't, if, if now if we're talking like about a Jackie Hill Perry or like For somebody, sure. you know what I mean? To where it's just like don't do that. a Darius Daniels don't or something like that. Jackie. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. Don't do it. Save yourself the trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's, it's just like, she's just, she's, not for the, you know what I'm saying? The fan the Small fair. interaction, like small talk, you know? Um, yeah. It's funny because <laughs> I learned this on tour uh, because Jasmine Sims is exactly like that. For what I'm here. Like, uh, I remember Zeke was like, yeah, you and Jackie are very much alike. Because um, we would do the VIP beforehand. Yeah. And mind you, for somebody who's literally not social in that way, you know, and that's something she has to stretch herself in. And she, she did an ama- Jasmine Sims, she did an amazing <laughs> job that year on a tour but she would literally go to the vip then do the game night then do the uh spoken word and then after that do the spoken word freestyle prayer from the prayer requests that were on there and then afterwards people like hey where's jasmine and she's like i'm done like, yeah I, I, she's like, I just can't you know what yeah. i'm saying and um from what i'm hearing jackie was like that. except jackie wouldn't even come out for the vip <laughs> it's yeah just like, it's just like yeah i'm good yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do my pieces, and, and this is it. You know, yeah. And she has the right to do so. You know, what, what I'm saying because yeah, like, I understand that it's it's either that or I'll be depleted for the whole experience. You yeah, know for saying? sure, like, for sure. Yeah. Especially when you're like going on tour and things like that. But like, yeah, for us, it's like, it's all, it, honestly, it's honestly very encouraging. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, you know, because when you're doing stuff like this, and you know, you're filming podcasts, and you're creating content or things like that, you know, it's just like, well. Hopefully this is helping somebody, you Absolutely. know, and you see numbers and likes and things like that, but it's different when you're meeting people in person. So Absolutely. anyway, that, uh, I, I would say um, kind of, I know we went down a little bit of a rabbit trail there, but like some of the things that I ask my wife to know about my wife, I didn't learn until later. Like it's not questions that I would know like in, like in the beginning, but it's questions like over time, like, man. Uh, I want to make sure I love my wife well, and I want to surprise her, but I want to have some guidance and the surprise. So, sure. hey, uh, here's 1-800-Flowers.com. Can you just, like, select some things, you know, that you would like so that, yeah. that way I can have a list to surprise you with at random times, yeah. right? So it's like yeah. surprise, but it's guided so that that way yeah. I'm not giving her something that she doesn't actually want, you know? And then, like, <clears throat> actually, even last week, I had her do the thing. I, I had her. I tried to ask her to do the same <clears throat> thing with, like, Lululemon, in like the uh, like athleisure and like athletic clothes, because I hear they like go on like butter and they feel great. And she was like, "Oh no, like I actually that wouldn't make me feel love because I would actually want to go to the Lululemon store because I've never mm-hmm. tried on Lululemon and now I want to make sure that blah 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 blah." And so she's like, "Okay, cool." It all just comes down to like really asking questions on how can I best love you. Yeah. Individual. I was about to say I saw yeah I was watching a movie a while back and I forgot exactly what the title is, but in the movie basically the husband and the wife were gifting each other stuff. For years, yeah, and didn't communicate. They hated the gifts that they were getting. Wow! You know what I'm and like, and they at the end they had a conversation about it. They laughed and all this other stuff, but they started talking about like, this is what I enjoy. This is what I like, and then went from there. Yeah. And so when you were saying that, that's what that's what kind of that's what came to mind. And you that's why chocolate. I'm vegan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dairy milk chocolates. <laughs> you know what's crazy, bro? Even if you look at dark chocolate, it's still got milk in it. Oh, yeah. So it's just dark milk chocolate. Oh, yeah. You got to go like straight matter. cocoa Hershey's beans. is a lie. Yeah. 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 That's that's tough. Yeah, bro. Skittles is. are vegan, though, right? No. It has gelatin in it, which is pig ligaments. Mm. And we love bacon. Which gives the chewiness. Ah. Yeah, so wow. Actually, that is. It's actually not kosher. That, mostly any candy that's chewy, it's going to have gelatin in it. Wow. How about yeah. that? Yeah, it's crazy. Learn something new every day. Yeah, yeah. but I, but you know, going back to what you were saying about that movie, yeah. like I think that one of the things that Amanda and I often tell one another is like, not only do I love you, but I like you. Yeah. That was what was missing with those gentlemen who you were with. Yeah. It's like they love their wives, but they didn't like their wives. Yeah. You know. But 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 what is so so what's what's the mix up? Because I think that initially they liked them. But are you telling me they thought they liked them, but didn't know the real them? 
And then while, after getting married to them, you finally realize, oh, snap, this is who you really are? Because I really do see people that are infatuated in the beginning phase. So what do you think that, because I don't know if you've actually seen this in some of the marriages you, you've been around where it's mm-hmm. like, man, like I'm seeing y'all and y'all are just riding out the commitment rather than actually like loving each other in, in, the, in the way that, you know what I'm saying? I've seen Yeah, like, for beneficial. sure. So do you think it's like a, they played themselves in the beginning? Um, I think that you, in the very beginning of a relationship, the, the honeymoon phase is when you look at things through rose colored glasses and that there are certain things that you may even be willing to acquiesce to, to say, hey, you know, I, I yeah, sure, I like classical music, you know? Oh yeah, I'll go to this concert. But then, you know, once you get married and after like year three, year five, you know, like you may not just, y'all just may have different interests, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why many guys have guy best friends because those guy best friends have similar interests and they feel like there's a higher level of relatability to them, right? Like the, 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 the etymology of the word relationship and relatability are the same. And so to the degree in which you feel like you can relate to someone, that's typically indicative of how much you believe you can build a strong relationship with them, right? So I think that at the end of the day, like building things together is how you accomplish that, right? So like for Amanda and I, like she loves gardening. Yeah. She's always talking about like gardening and her like tomatoes and like all of that stuff. <clears throat> soil, different types of like acidities and stuff like that. And she'd be in there spraying stuff. And I'm just like, I don't really care about this. And then I, and then I, I love college football. Like, I'm like, yo, when college football starts, like on September 3rd, don't look for me. I am in the room with a bowl of nachos, minding my business. And like, you got the kids that day, right? But like, there are also, but there are things that are that overlap that we enjoy together. For instance, building a business together, right? Times in which I was down, she was up. Times in which she was down, I was up. And like building something beautiful together, raising kids together. With both her and I being communicators, it's like, hey, like, why don't like, I mean, we, we, we were talking last night, we were like, hey, you know, sometimes we're not, we're, we're trying to find something to watch on Netflix, but we both communicators, like, Why don't we just like turn on like somebody who inspires us, you know, in their style of communication and like watch a sermon, you know, for the for the godly part of it, but like also just like hear like, oh, how do they like, what are their intonations to like rev up a crowd? Like, how do they get the people to clap? Like, oh, that's interesting how like they repeated this word at the beginning of a phrase and then they 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 do that and that, like, and so just like once again, you know finding common interests together and like building those things together, it, it will oftentimes make you say, man, this is something that I would do by myself, but thankfully I don't have to do it by myself. I have somebody to do it with. That's good. How, That's good. Uh, hopefully I asked this question right, but <clears throat> how do you stay in a space? Because you say you study your wife. Yeah. And you've been doing this for years, yeah. 10 years. Decade. How do, you, how do you continue to adjust? No, not even that. Cause she's gonna change. She's changed throughout the years. <laughs> yeah. How do you continue yeah. to not like get used to? Think, the yeah, get used to a version of her. Like, what did you do to, to stay away from that? Because I feel like, because I've heard this before, where like uh, Kev on stage. This is the first time I heard it. He was just like, man, like he said, I just realized, or something on the lines of that, my wife is going to change, so I must change with her. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Oh, one hundred percent. Well, I like happiness. Yeah. So when, <laughs> so. When, when my wife is changing, uh-huh. if I do not change with her, then that makes her unhappy, yeah, which makes know. things unhappy. <laughs> One of the things that I love about Amanda, we were at a marriage retreat, hosting a marriage retreat for Embassy, mm-hmm. and we were going around and uh, people were saying, what is the, your favorite part about your spouse? And I said this about Amanda, and she had never heard me say it before, and I had never really thought about it before, like, cognizantly, but like, I, 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 it came up. I said, I love the fact that my wife is clear. Like, if Amanda says she's not upset with me, then she's not upset with me. Praise God. If she says she is upset with me, I mean, hit the lottery. My God. Well, this is this has been over time. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is this is one day one. This is this is one day one. You know, and so 
If she's upset, she's upset and she'll express her feel That's feelings good. about why she's upset. That's and good. then she will also delineate if she's upset with me or upset with the situation. Because those can be two completely different things. She may be upset at a circumstance that I was involved in, but it wasn't personal to me. Yeah. You know what she's I mean? She's able to describe that in the moment. Yeah, like it happened today. Like, it, like you know, we're, we're riding home from church and, you know, she's getting back into her content game or whatever. And so, you know, uh, I have the podcast tonight and then we have uh, like dinner with some friends tomorrow. And then we have dinner with some friends on Tuesday. And Amanda likes having like space in her day to like, create without having things on the schedule. But the dinner that was on Monday and Tuesday were due to things from last week being rescheduled to those days and it just worked. So it just played out to where, you know, I'm gone from the house three, day, three nights in a row. And I had communicated all that with her and she was fully aware of all these things happening. She didn't really like it, but that didn't have anything to do with me personally, yeah. even though it involved me, you know, which is helpful because then I don't take things personal and then get defensive and then make something big out of something that really didn't have to go there anyway. Yeah. So I think that like me and Amanda have a very strong c cadence of communication in which as she changes, she'll be like, I like this now. I don't like this anymore. And as part of loving her, I learn her and ensure that, you know, I, I follow suit. That is true. That is. Say, say, say that. Okay. Say it's probably because she trusts who he says he's going to be. That is true. That is true. I'm a very, I'm a very, I'm very much a, I mean, I, I said at the beginning of this podcast, I said, I told Street, it was about a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> So, because the thing is, Street be on tour. He's intentional. Street be on tour. You know what I mean? So, but I told him over a year ago, I was like, I will. You invited me on the podcast. Count me in. I will be on your podcast. Mm -hmm. You called me and asked me. I remember. Mm -hmm. I was in the kitchen. And I was just like, yeah, bro. I got you. Yeah. And so it's like, when I say I'm going to do something, I will get it done. And if I don't get it done, you will hear from me on why it's not getting done. Wow. It won't be like a... Like a, whatever happened to this or that? Like, no, you won't have to come find me. I will search for you. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. because integrity is a huge piece. And integrity is simply the gap between what you say and what you do. <laughs> and, and the close, and, and to the degree in which those things are separate, that is the degree to where you are not integral. And so perfect integrity is when what you say and what you do are aligned. always aligned and overlap. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that having, um, yo, like having just integrity from the get go in a relationship is so, 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 so key. Um, and I mean, honestly, like I think about even like my, fr like different people who I've had interactions with and stuff like that. Like sometimes there is a, a gap or a breach in Integrity because the husband is like watching pornography or, or he cheated or he didn't say he didn't do what he said he was going to do. And so now his wife is not his best friend, but it's not because of his wife. It's because of his actions hurting his wife and his wife is wrestling through a tension and a dichotomy of I am married to you and want to be with you, but I'm also trying to heal from the hurt that you're causing me. And so therefore it's causing like a division. And for him, it's easier to just kick it with the homie, smoke cigars and drink bourbon. Then to like work through all the weeds of like, what uh, of the cause, you know what I mean? So Amanda and I over the years have had like various difficult conversations, but those difficult conversations, it's just like, no, I want to lean into this. Yeah. And, and that way it doesn't cause bitterness and resentment. And so, okay, I got I got kind of two questions. Maybe I confuse them into one. Um, but I don't know if you're familiar with the Red Pill community at all. Oh, is that like Andrew Tate yeah. Yeah, and like yeah, Kevin yeah. Samuels yeah, and all them? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yes. 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 So essentially, you know, because as you talk about, you know, self improvement, being in the gym, being confident in yourself, you know, that's that's obviously a big conversation within that space. You know, um, along with that. We also have a conversation of uh, when you look for a woman, find a traditional wife, find a person who is a servant, find a person who cooks, find a person who cleans, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what I'm finding is 
is that for the very few that actually desire to actually seek out that, they're finding that person, but there is no kinship. There is no, like, like union. It's just you fit the mold of what a woman is supposed to be. Sure. And so now I'm seeking out the woman, but now you're conjoined with the woman or developing a covenant with the woman who you really aren't even in relationship with aside from the necessities of what you see a woman's supposed to be. Yeah. And the, what you're supposed to be in a man is a provider. So totally. you're a provider and servant. Totally. Essentially. Absolutely. For sure. They just want to marry their mom. They want somebody to like cook for them, clean for them, take care of the kids. Like they just, they want no, to care for them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh my God. Which is why somebody can love their mom but not be best friends with them. Um, so, so I think that the, I think that that conversation requires a lot of context depending on the individual. That's good. I'll keep it a stack with how me and Amanda rock. So the reality is that many times, if your wife wants to do that and you marry a woman who wants to do that, that's great. That's awesome. But you want to know what I found is that. Uh, money solves a lot of those problems for you. Indeed. You, guess what? Amanda does not cook. She doesn't like to cook. You know what we do? We order factor. We order pre-made meals. We door dash. And guess what? We eat good. And it's just the same. <laughs> like, we eat good. I always, I always, I always talk about that. Like we talk about uh, like traditional aspects of the biblical woman. I'm like, do you really think Moses's wife? was cooking all her meals where they had all these servants and sojourners, like, like a part of their family. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like, yo, when we mention these kings, we mention the people that you're like, oh, I want to be like this person, this person, this person. I'm For like, sure. sure, but do you think their wives were doing all of the nope. typical duties, et right. cetera? Like, like, and, and I, I think that also comes with the aspect of luxury. Yeah. Sure, when you, absolutely. When you, when you have a luxurious lifestyle, you're able to join with this person there are things where what would be more so traditional or cultural don't even have to be a part of the factor, and you can actually walk in what you're called to and yeah. without the extra, you know what I'm saying? For or sure. Even foundational things, it's like, hey, I like doing this or I don't like doing this, but it's yeah. not a necessity yeah. Yeah. to define our marriage yeah, yeah, yeah. or our well, relationship. And honestly, I mean, if, if, we, if we just don't keep it a stack stack, yeah, please stack do. Bro, we just going to keep it a stack stack, many men want a traditional woman, but it's just like, are you planning to be a traditional man? Yeah. Because because you want a traditional woman, meanwhile, you're making $12 an hour <laughs> and you're running your, you know, like graphic design cartoon business on the side and like you don't want your wife to work to take care of these kids. And it's just like, okay, like, that's one side of it. But then there's also the other side of it yeah. to where it's like, for some men, they're like, oh, I don't want my wife to have to work. But really, the reason that they don't want their wife to have to work is so that way they can keep their wife dependent on them and have a level of control over them. Mm. So that that way they don't have their own independence. Yeah. And they develop. And so, and so, like, if we just keep it a real stack, you yeah. know, there are some men who, who just want to, like, basically use not working for their women as handcuffs to keep them in a marriage. You know what I mean? So I think at the end of the day, man, like you got to like, you have to evaluate a few things. You have to evaluate who is my, like, who is my wife? Yeah, who is my spouse? Yeah, who is yeah. my partner? Like sometimes people say what they want, but what they actually want is not what they want. They want what that thing they think they want will make them feel. Yeah. Yeah. The they want the feeling of the thing. So, so, so it's even just the like, men are caring about feelings more than the, the logic? Uh, oh. So, 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 so I, I, I. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, run that back. That. The, yeah, men yeah. Are feel, uh, the men are caring more about the feelings than the logic themselves. Exactly. And these same men are the ones that are saying, put your feelings are, down. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Man. Because the thing is, men actually do have feelings. Facts. <laughs> but we all, but we don't wait, know wait, how. Wait, what? <laughs> My wife didn't know that I had feelings until about a year ago. Oh, so it takes time. 
It's because I'm, my wife. No, no, no. Let that let that marinate, man. Yeah. So so so, what do you feel like was the? Because I, I I've I've said this not in a in a way to like. Like to diss or to to or even like to disassociate the the growth that men and women can go through. But I've literally, when I talk to the married men around me, I'm like, man, when's the last time your wife asked about your feelings? Because for a man to to check in on a woman's feelings and know how she's feeling is just natural. It's like I feel like this, I feel like this. It's constantly communicated, mm-hmm. but I don't see it vice versa. So when you're saying like, man, not to say that she's not been aware that she, but like it's like, man, she has been actively involved in your feelings for last year. Like what what yeah. what would you think was the hump? Well, I think that um therapy, one for mm-hmm. one. Um but I think that just her digging a little deeper because mm-hmm. she would say, how do you feel about this? And I would say, well I think that this and my thinking thoughts are not my feelings. Mm-hmm. So so how do you feel about how do you feel about going going out to dinner? Oh, I think that sounds good. I like the food. Well, that's not a feeling. Those are thoughts. Yeah. And because I mean, and this isn't something that I like pride myself on. I actually wish there was the opposite. But my wife has never seen me cry. I haven't cried in like I don't know over ten years. I mean, it. it and I actually feel like that's. I am very. Uh, I, I, I feel like I show emotions to my kids because I think that it's healthy for children to see a dad that has emotions. Yes. Like we yeah. serve a father in heaven who has like emotions and feelings around yeah. things. And so I think that that's, that's definitely important. Um, I don't know. I think that, I don't know, it may have just been like childhood that, that my tear ducts just dried up or something. But yeah. I think that yeah. in com- with Amanda though, she cried all the time. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, the combination of that, along with me having thinking feelings, not feeling feelings, it took a little digging and like a little feelings wheel to be like, okay, I know that like you think this, but if you have feelings, based off of this little wheel, which one of these do you identify with most? Wheel. Yeah, wheel. Boom. Yeah, yeah. And then it's boom. And then it's boom. Yeah. And then there's a higher level of, and then also feelings too um, come with, expressive feelings come with a greater level of vulnerability. It's good. Um, and transparency. Mm-hmm, yeah. And so I would say this has only happened within the last, since like March, April of this year. So it's just like, I now feel like I can talk to my wife about probably 99% of everything. Like wow. I could just, be, and we actually have this like cue. Mm-hmm. We'll just say unprompted. And after unprompted, you can say anything. Wow. Okay. Um, um, like, like unprompted, my favorite color is green. And I think it's cool that you're wearing a green hat. And my wife would be like, oh, that's so cool. You know what I mean? Blah, 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 blah. I wore this hat for you, baby. Whatever. You know what I mean? So it's just like, <laughs> like literally, we just start talking about random yeah. stuff. Like yeah. anything. Yeah. Like anything. But then what happens is you get so used to the unprompted casual things. Then when something actually needs to be brought up, mm-hmm. like it's not, it's not like this new like yeah. muscle that yeah. you're flexing. You've been yeah. flexing this muscle, you know, over the course of days yeah. to where now it's just like, oh, now there's something a little bit more serious. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. unprompted. I think this is what's happening to our son, you know, when he goes to the gym or when he goes to church. Like, how can we address that? Unprompted. I think that this is what's happening to our daughter when she's in dance class and, you know, whatever. Like, just as conversations grow and get more serious, flexing the muscle of vulnerability and transparency is how you get to the gold of feeling like, this person is my best friend. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Bro, I had, I had, I, I, Elijah, please don't be mad at me, bro. I'm so sorry. But we're, we're going to talk about this next week a little bit deeper. But <clears throat> so one of the questions we got last week from Cass um, was for women who desire ambition and desire to walk in what God's called them to, it seems as though in this culture, that's something that's less attractive to a man. And for you, from what I see and, 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 and what I'm observing, you're with a very outgoing, ambitious, and vocal woman. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And it's almost like not so much uh, her by herself will be a woman that this culture is like, oh, yeah, don't. Just because she's active. Yeah, boss she's, lady. She, she's vocal. Yeah. She's very, very, uh, uh, she's, she's blunt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to how she speaks and things like that. And, and so... What was it for you? Because 
I don't know if like she was already gaining popularity when y'all first started talking and things like no, that. So, not at all. so what was it like in that journey with y'all being together and then her having this trajectory and then your trajectory is also on the uh, on the rise as well. But seeing her trajectory essentially, um, Matt, uh, uh, not I guess Trump yours. By oh, numbers. for sure. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Well. There are a lot of things that, that's a really good question. I don't know if I've ever been asked that question before. So um, I would say a few things. The first thing that I would say is that in the beginning of our relationship, there was no influence. There was like no even, there were barely any social media. Like the idea of influencers and things like that wasn't even a concept. It's MySpace era. It was like, it was like first, first year, I think it was like the first year, second year of Instagram. Like it was like early. It was early, early, because um, we got we started dating in two thousand, the uh, January twenty thirteen. Yeah. Started talking in twenty twelve, but January. So I mean, we're talking. It, it's been a while. So yeah, yeah. Um, I would say that um, earlier, Caleb asked a question. Oh, what were some questions that you asked? And I was like, well, what is going to be our purpose together? Mm. So when we were at SMU, like there weren't many godly couples dating there. like God's way or any, even thinking about marriage. Uh, at 19 and 20 years old, like how we were. And so we were like, oh, what if we just created things to help people? And then we started creating things to help people, and then they started helping people, yeah. you know? And then as we help people, then, like, things grew. And so I think that what's interesting is that, like, over the course of this journey, like, uh, Amanda has experienced more influence, but I have experienced more income. And the two are not the same. Indeed. She has. She, she. I got a lot of influence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so like I almost. I'm still working on that income. Like not that. Not, like I. I would be like, yo, why are you like? I mean, not why are you, but like, why would I be doing like YouTube and like reels and blah blah blah? I'm like, I'm about to get this bread. Get back. Like I'm about to get this back. Like. Yeah. I'm about to sign this contract with St. John's. I'm about yeah, to sign this yeah. contract with Rutgers. I'm about to sign this contract with Oklahoma University. Like, I'm, about to, I'm about to make bread, you know what I mean? To where these people don't even, my clients, because they're colleges and universities, because I don't sell the people, like my clients don't get a, give, give a hoo-hoo uh, hoo about like what mm. I look like on social, social. media, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but like for her, it's not even, it's not even, in, it's not even, it's not, it's not an income play. Like she, she can monetize it to the degree in which she decides to, you know what I mean? But like, I mean, you go on the manager's page, I, I mean, I think she sells, she has like some t-shirts or something on her website that we drop ship. And I, I think for every t-shirt we make like $4 or something like that. Like, I don't know. I mean, it's negligible. Um, but like, she doesn't, she doesn't monetize her influence very often at all. But her influence is a purpose play. Yeah. Yeah. And, what, and you want to know what's, you want to know something that's wild. Two, uh, this is August. Literally a year ago, actually, in the month of August, had two buddies, two homies of mine going through a divorce. One here in Dallas, the other in Atlanta. And these guys uh, are like great black men. In, in both scenarios with these two men, it was the wife's fault. Like, the wives were both tripping in both scenarios, and the wives, like, stepped out or whatever. So, like, men of God, you know, like, marriage ended, right? I'm thinking, let me tell you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, you know, when I'm talking to them, because, like, their wives had stepped out and, like, they were going through all this stuff, I was like, hey, bro, about to get you back in the game, homie. You're going to be the bachelor, you know what I mean? I hear that the streets are looking for black men who love Jesus, you know? Um, and so- I've heard the same I've, from I've the heard, streets. I've heard. And so I was like, so I was just like, yo, are you ready for like, are you ready for this fresh start? The harvest is ready. You're like, huh? <laughs> huh? Them workers though. Huh? The workers. <laughs> the workers, huh? Few. Huh? It's few. Yeah. So, so you want to know what was the wildest thing to me? Talk to me. I thought like, oh, like they are going, they are going to be most excited about like being back out on the scene, meeting, rekindling, you know, a new relationship, honeymoon phase, all that stuff. Both of them, two separate people, one in Atlanta, one in Dallas, don't even know each other. They both said, what I'm most excited about 
is that I feel like there's, there are things that I'm purposed to do that I felt like my ex was holding me back from. And now I feel like I can actually like pursue and like fulfill my fullest potential yeah. and like be yeah. all who God's called me to be, which was wild to me, but it really highlighted the importance of, oh, I gotta make sure Amanda always feels purposeful. Yeah, mm. that's good. I gotta make sure she never that's feels good. held back. That's good. It don't matter like, but like from a financial standpoint, I got it. But like it, for, from a purpose, purpose. calling yeah, meaning so standpoint, good, like, she, like she's not the type to be like, oh, I'm gonna be like Susie Homemaker and just be at the house with the kids all day. Yeah. That is not Amanda. You know what I mean? Like I said, she don't even like to cook. So like, <laughs> so like that, so it's just like for her, it's like, how can I make her as purposeful as possible? Yeah. No, that's good. So what would you say for us that's like, how do we pay attention to our purpose as we are dating? Because I just remember at one point, uh, I was dating someone and then like two months in, I realized I didn't dance, wasn't at the skate park. I wasn't even talking about coffee. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, these are things I love. And he was miserable. Certain, yeah, bro. Like, these he are was certain miserable. things that I was like, I <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But he was smitten, though. Just, but miserable. She must have been fine. It, uh, yes. But even still. But, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, but I realized later on, I was just like, man, like, I wasn't walking in anything that the Lord had, like, called me to do. So what would you say? How do we pay attention to that more intentionally? Yeah, ain't no level of fine that can make up for being unpurposeful and unhappy. That's facts. Um, are you familiar with Are you familiar with shape? Are you in shape? Am I in shape? Not like from a muscular physical standpoint, but from like a calling purpose standpoint. I don't know. I don't know what this. Okay, it's, it's okay. Acronym. It is an acronym. What's this acronym for? It is an acronym. Y'all know the acronym. Okay, here it is. S stands for spiritual gifts. For sure. H stands for, so do you know your spiritual gifts? You're asking, yes. how do you stay focused? Yeah. Well, you have to know what you're actually staying focused on. For sure. You know, because like purpose and calling and things like that, it can be so like ambiguous and amorphous mm -hmm. to where it's just like, oh, I think that this is my purpose and calling and meaning and stuff, but I, you know, but like there's no like true direction, right? For sure. And so like uh, S stands for spiritual gifts. Okay. What, uh, what, what are my spiritual gifts? What, are my, what am I called to do? For sure. H stands for heart. Yeah. Which means, what do I actually care about? Yeah. What wakes me up in the morning? What gets me going? What is the thing that when I talk to somebody about this, I'm passionate about it, And they're like, That's oh, good. okay, cool. And then you're just like, why are you not like, just like feeling the same way about it as I do? Well, those feelings are an indication of purpose. Purpose is simply a problem that needs to be solved. I'm just writing this down. <laughs> that you're called to solve. And so... That which gets on your nerves don't get on everybody else's nerves. Facts. So because it gets on your nerves, it's an indication that that's probably part of your, your purpose, to, your passion to solve. Mm -hmm. that's good. H stands for heart. A stands for abilities. Yeah. Abilities are the skills that you have to do like your spiritual gifts and the things that you're called to do. Yeah. And abilities can be learned. Abilities can be acquired. Abilities can be things that you learn in your job, that you learn in the workplace, that you learn... Um, that you maybe even have naturally, For right? Sure. Um, so I've always had the gift of gab. Like, I've, I've, I've always been talking. I've mm -hmm. stayed talking, you mm -hmm, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And now I talk for a living, you know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's just like that is an ability. P is personality. Yeah. Personality. So two people could have the same ability, but different personalities. And so the way that those abilities are expressed are going to yeah. look different. You take somebody who's an extrovert, yeah. who has the spiritual gift of teaching a heart for people in God's kingdom and the ability to like exegete scripture. An extrovert may be in like, uh, uh, like a feel more comfortable with like speaking to a big audience and like afterwards doing meet and greets. Yeah. An introvert may have the same spiritual gift of teaching, may have the same heart for discipleship, may have the same ability to exegete scripture, but instead, because they're an introvert, they're going to lean more towards like one-on-one -on -one discipleship yeah. versus just like big crowds. Yeah. And so that's where the P plays a part of it, and E stands for your experiences. Mm. Experiences, your, your family experiences, your personal experiences, your vocational experiences, your educational experiences, yeah. especially your painful experiences. Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, your pain, because whenever you no, there's no better person to like help someone else through their pain than someone who's walked through the same pain. Walk Facts. Facts. Like 
who better to help like a parent who's walking through their children with their children who's dealing with drug abuse than the parent who's done it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. and so like the reason why we go through these painful experiences is so that we can actually build up the body of Christ. Amen. I tell people all the time that your pain won't have purpose if it's private. For sure. Sheesh. And so like in order for you to actually like maximize your purpose, you actually have to share your pain so that that way you can help other people out of their pain as well. And so those are the things that affect your, that, that shape what I call your calling. Yeah. Because purpose and calling are two different things. Facts. So like your calling is what you are called specifically to do. Your purpose is more general. So like for example, like in the body of Christ, we all actually have the same purpose. Facts. Make Jesus known. To make Jesus known. That's yes. good. But we have different callings. Yes. And guess what? Let's just say um, I was. I, I told you guys, hey, uh, there is a um, something that you have in your kitchen, and this thing in your kitchen helps you eat your food better. What would you say that thing is? Fork. Utensil. A fork. Okay. Does someone else have a different opinion? A utensil. And a plate. Very good. Uh, excellent. Excellent. So, 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 if I were to say, okay, so if I were to say. Um, this thing that helps you eat your food better has three prongs, then it would be a what? Fork. If it like sliced through steak, what would it be? Nine. If it was able to like scoop up uh, cereal and soup, what would it be? Spoon. Notice that all of those things have the same purpose to help you eat your food better, but they're each called to something different. Mm. You can't, you don't eat soup with a fork. Facts. You don't, you don't, you don't eat cereal with a knife. There's some cycles how do you there, how you define what these utensils are used for? Well, you can figure out what they should be used for based on the way that they're shaped. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. Bro, that's good. And it's, so, it's important because a lot of times we conflate or correlate our talents and abilities yeah. uh, based on that with yeah. our gift and yeah. our calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and we'll even confuse our vocation with our calling. Yes, yeah. most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. How have you encouraged your wife in her giftings and the things that the Lord has called her in without you necessarily having those same giftings and different things like that? How have you encouraged that? I've asked her, how does she like to be encouraged? Like, I, I just like took away the ambiguity because for her, she's a words of affirmation person. Mm -hmm. So encouragement lands hard with her. Yeah. For me, I'm an acts of service person. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, actions speak louder than words. You know what I mean? You yeah. love me, prove it. Let me see it. You know, but like for her, she's like, let me hear it. Yeah. But because that's not something that I lean into, then I was, I was just like, hey, can you give me some examples of like what you need to hear in these moments, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, and that way, as I have grown, we've grown in our relationship, then I've gotten used to like certain cadences mm -hmm. or things she needs to hear. And sometimes it comes down to like understanding what does she need from me in this moment? Mm -hmm. Does she need me to solve a problem? Does she need me to speak to a problem? Does she need me to just speak life? Does she need me to just remind her of who she is and yeah. what she's called to do? Sure. And so it's like, I believe that encouraging her, um, comes from once again knowing her but like once again i love that my wife is very a very clear person so mm -hmm. i'm like hey i want to be the best person i can be for you so like give me an example like help me understand like what things you would want to hear because i have my theories yeah but like i'm not you yeah, yeah, and yeah. i don't want to give you something that i think you want when you don't actually want it and now i'm frustrated that you're not getting and receiving the things that i want you to receive when you shouldn't have to pretend like you are satisfied with that, which is frustrating you because you're not getting what you actually want anyway. For sure. Does that make That's sense? Good. Yeah, yeah. So. I think you kind of, I think you actually just kind of answered the question I was about to ask, but I'm still going to ask it just sure. in case. When it concerns, because you said you don't really do the content stuff. I, I dabble. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like lean on other people's content. Like I'm yeah. like, oh, I see a camera right there. I got a mic. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure y'all tag me. Make sure y'all tag me. I ain't gonna spend an hour make, on the make, 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 make it, make it, make it, make it a collaborator. <laughs> you know. She's, so she's more, way more into it. Uh, like, you oh said, yeah, I mean, for sure, most certainly. Do yeah. you feel like you have to be in a space where you're like, I have to help grow you in that particular area, even though that's not really my thing? You know what I'm saying? Like, help her grow in her like influence with the content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's more so times where I have to like be like the emotional support. Okay. Or like the like, hey, I know it's been a while since you posted something. You yeah, kind of yeah, feel yeah. out of the rhythm, feel out of the groove. Mm -hmm. Let's do a podcast together. Yeah. Let's just chop it up. Yeah. And that way you don't have to feel like you're like 
in front of a ring light and a phone, like trying to come up with something and conjure up something. Like, let's just let's just get the party flowing, yeah. you know, together, yeah. you know, or like let me actually just give you space away from the. I'll take the kids to the library, to the gym, whatever, and that way it just gives you space to like pray, think, and like once. Like, my wife is, like, very, very intelligent and yeah. very, very competent. So, like, once she's, once she's good up here, then, like, the hands the work and do, yeah. do whatever they need to do. You know what I mean? That's why she has the influence she has, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she has the eye for it. She has the voice for it. All of those things. But, like, sometimes it's, like, in between the ears that gets in the way. It's not the hands. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, that's what I would say in, in response to that. Good, All right. So, uh... Don't be fooled, I'm not the special. I okay, okay, okay. Bro. This is the I part of the podcast called The Smoke Session, where the live studio audience has the ability, opportunity, oh my gosh, and chance to come to the smoke seat, to come with the questions, the comments, concerns, or the smoke. But best believe, we do keep a gas mask, so beware. We already got somebody in the smoke seat. This probably might be the fastest somebody's ever had Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm, I, I, do y'all care if y'all are on social? Because I, I want to. No, uh, hey, get this. Are, yeah, go ahead and get this. Y'all are. Yeah. It's, y'all are. We got a few people out here right I'm now. I'm like, I don't think Street really communicated to me that we were going to have a live audience. <laughs> probably and not. So, um, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> but this is not right. <laughs> it, it's. The energy is so different. I'm like, me and the man, we gotta, I got to get your advice on how to like do this. Well, you're, but you're more popular than I am, so it doesn't. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Nah, bro, it's, it's, bro it's, it's, it's one of those things where, honestly, bro, like, I, I feel like this happened on accident. I, 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 so the story behind the podcast, um, the person I was talking to at the time, me and Elijah were shooting the first podcast. Uh-huh. And then you can actually go watch the first episode. In the first episode, one of the biggest moments was behind the scenes, you heard her talking. And then after that, it was like, yo, that element provided a very dope moment in the podcast. And yeah. I was like, what if we replicated that? And so we posted some clips from it. I was like, and we saw people in the comments like upset at the stuff we were saying. Cause I'm like, yo, I like Candace Owens. And then people was like, yo, you're crazy. I said, well, come and talk to us about it next week. Huh. And so after that, like people started coming. And then I was like, yo, what if we did this every week? And so we just kind of developed a live studio audience from episode one on through, and it was an accident. Wow, yeah. that is lit. Yeah. That yeah. is lit. So wow, it's, it's I'm so proud of y'all. This is great. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a What's minute. That? Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, it. my God. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm proud of you, black man. I'm proud of I'm you, black, black man. man. Let's go. I'm proud of you, black man. Let's go. Um, I have two statements and a question. Okay. Statement one. Can I have your name so I can? Oh, I'm Demaria from Calls Me D. Hey everybody. Hi. Um, First statement: We love Amanda, and because we love Amanda, we love you as well. You you. know what I'm saying? You are included in the love. You You know what I'm saying? Thank you. But Amanda, girl. (laughs) (laughs) Also. Last year, audience make some noise. You feel me? It's kind of lit over here today. We got yeah, it's nice over here. Go ahead. Um, second statement. Um, I want to kind of bring it back to what you said. Like when, like a guy's like a five, but if he's confident, if he's you know, um, there's like a self assurance inside of him. Like he's, um, you can see his passions and like yeah. what he wants to do. He may not be fully. Um, engulfed or you know a master at those for passions. sure but the fact that you're able to see those passions and you're able to see his integrity level you're able to see those things you can jump from a five to a nine like absolutely and Wild. we're talking about mature but i believe we're it. talking about mature women at this point too you know we're not you know there are women out there who prefer you know the outer versus what a man has to offer, but sure. we're not talking about those type of women. But else so could be immature. True. Immature. Look, my name Jay Z said like this: "You cannot be an ugly billionaire." <laughs> and that man told the truth. Like it's just like look, no, no H O M O. That man has gotten more handsome through the years. In my words, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, man, Jay Z looking good. I'm like, <laughs> with the crazy hair, Say with the crazy want. hair, yeah, with like, the crazy hair. They do exist. They do exist. They do exist. Oh, His the DMs, the DMs say otherwise. <laughs> the, the, the results say otherwise. 
<laughs> right. Do you have integrity? Yes, Are you a man of your word? You Indeed. know what I'm saying? Like that, as if you're if you're a woman that's sure of what they're looking for past the external, then those things matter. Right? Yeah. Um, I want to get to my question now because I was so ready to have this conversation because I've been having I've been listening to I'm a podcast girl. Like that's just kind of what I am into. And I've been kind of been like fasting from like secular music and stuff like that, just really trying to tap into knowledge because um, I want to be a better person of relationship. Sure. And when they talk about being a friend or establishing some type of kinship or camaraderie before, you know, like securing this person as your wife, and I'm hearing a lot of conversations um, I'm listening to a lot of like male centered conversations just to kind of get an idea of how men think. And it's like that really it really took me like by surprise to be like, y'all are really marrying these women. You don't like them. Like right. these women are doing everything for you. They're cooking for you. They're having your babies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They busting it down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. However many times a night. Right. And you don't like them. Like that's crazy to me. Um, and like, I, I can see how the church influence or some things may play a part when we talk about purity culture and you know what I'm saying like uh, there's not a lot of interaction between men and women so men and women don't know how to be friends yeah. you know what I'm saying like how to interact with each other um, purely and genuinely and not just romantically or sexually and so my question um, when we talking about when we talk about building um these type of friendships or these type of platonic relationships? Like what are ways that the church or just like if you're trying to pursue someone's like friendship or any or something like that, what are some ways that the church can be or like what are some ways that we can help people? You know what I'm saying? Like how can we be friend? Like how is it to be a friend like in Christ? Like does that make sense? How can we be Right. Friends? You know what I'm saying? Like, how can we learn to, is there any tips or, like, advice on, like, people who are wanting to know, like, okay, maybe let's take this physical off the table. Like, how can I, how can the church, like, aid us, like, be better friends to each other? I hmm. hope that makes sense. Yes, without an agenda, like I'm not I'm not trying to be your friend so I can get in, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm not trying to be your friend. Like I'm talking about like genuine connections. I'm talking about like how t how can we build genuine platonic Friendship. relationships with people? Um yeah. yeah, I think so I am the type of person to where when people ask me questions, I often ask questions back to get a greater context for how to answer the question in the best way possible. So my question for you would be, why, are, why is building relationship with the opposite sex that's purely platonic important to you? I would say it's important to me because I feel like men, um, they have just a sense of like when we talk about logic versus emotional, um, cognitive thinking and things like that. Like, I feel like men kind of bring a balance, you know what I'm saying? I feel like we need each other. Like, I don't want to just have a circle of girlfriends and we just talking about, oh, this nigga this and this nigga that, da, 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 da. and it's like, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, I now I'm coming to men and I'm like, well, they saying y'all, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I want to, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, they I did, I did say that. trash, you know what I'm saying? Like, I and I that. get that there are, cause growing up like middle school, high school, I was a guy's girl. Like I didn't really have a lot of girlfriends, um, just because like I was the tomboy and because like I wasn't interested and some of the things that the women or the girls at the time were interested in. And so when I get older, um, you know, I don't really have as many guy friends because either, you know, they're off married or they're like, you know, things happen in life where we just kind of go our separate ways or there's a lack of self-control. And so, um, yeah, like, I, I, I've gained more women friends as I've gotten older, as we've, like, matured, and, you know, in my mind and things like that. But, like, I really, 
Yes, I see the value in having both men friends and women friends. Like, I see the value in both, and I feel like we need each other as far as community. So I feel like there's a disconnect, like, when we're talking about, like, you know, having those interactions with men or men having those interactions with women and it be genuine. Yeah, for sure. I'll be completely solid with you. Like, I have been married and in a relationship so long that I don't look for like platonic female relationships. Like sometimes they just happen naturally within like context, like, oh, like we like uh like Street was talking about how I play uh how I play keys at church, you know? Like there are women who are on the worship team who is just like, oh, you know, like we're like cordial, you know. But I'm not like texting them or like, you know what I mean? So I feel like I could easily just give you some theories. But the reality is that I've been out of that game for so long that I don't even want to come off as being more knowledgeable about that than I, than I actually That's am. real. I respect that. I respect just that. Just to be completely honest. I respect that. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, Within that, right? So you're talking about um, the, 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 the dynamic of married couples and then going into singleness, et cetera. Um, so one thing I've noticed is that in the midst of, especially when it comes to the men, um, when, when, they're, when they're talking about um, platonic relationships were there relationships that your wife was uncomfortable with that you had to cut off when y'all got married or were you able to sustain some of those friendships beforehand or was that not even a part of the game um so when we were in college let me think there were I would be completely real with you like, I was I stayed scoping and looking you know, like there, like there weren't that many, there weren't that many like women who I was just like buddy buddy with. The, I like, <laughs> like there was probably some level of attraction that I had Indeed. to you. Um, and then Amanda came on, I was just like, oh, okay, cool. Like I'm done. I'm out the game. All right, I'm out the game. Like <laughs> happily, um, because like I've always just, I've always just been like a dude. Like I'd rather just kick it with the homies and like, like I said, drink some bourbon play some Xbox, you know what I mean, watch a game or whatever. So, um, yeah, Amanda didn't, didn't ha there wasn't a dynamic in there that was, like, threatening by any means. Um, now, Amanda is the type of person to where she will cut you. So, I mean, if, 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 <laughs> if there was something you. there with anybody, she, she'll, she'll be vocal she, 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 she would, she would definitely be vocal about it. And she's, me and her could have the have the type of relationship to, to where it's just like, hey, <laughs> like, I know this person is your type and they're around. Like, how does that like how how does that feel? Like, how are you doing? Like, That's a great question. Oh no, like, you know, no, like I'm I'm straight. You know what I mean? Like, that like it's just we have a very, like very like we gotta have very just open just conversations on like. It's actually very intriguing to me, you know, many times. So it's just like, oh, like, oh, you think I find I would find this person attractive? <laughs> I can tell you you're completely safe. You know what I mean? Like, um, so it's just, it's always interesting. That's good. Um, That's good. It's always interesting. Well, thank you, D. Thank you, Demaria. Demaria. Demarie. Demarie. D. I should have just, I just, I just, just should have stuck with D. Hello. Hello. What is your name? Hello, Gavna. Disha. Disha? Yes. Do you also go by D? No. Good. So <laughs> it's just, it's, it's like Keisha, but with a D. Correct. Absolutely. She's like, she's like thank to... you. Finally. Yes, finally. It's not Dashia. So, yes, it is. Keep, like, it's not Disha. It's Keisha with a D. That's it. Y'all are really out here deep with this podcast. So I have a question. We got a community, bro. It's, it's really crazy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have a statement. No, you good. I have a statement. I was getting my thoughts together. 
So you mentioned something earlier that I wanted to touch back on. Um, when we were discussing how men want women to be traditional, all these things based from the Bible, yet this is a statement I'm paraphrasing. You said, yet you make $12 and <laughs> you are trying to build your game thing on the side. Straight up. So when we say it, when old girl said she didn't want the bus driver, it was a whole problem. Uh -huh. So what are you your views on that when you see those wars on social media? Like, nah, I need you to come with it a little bit. We get the economy. We know men don't make much as women, black, but we get all that narrative. Yeah, that. for but sure. What are your thoughts on that discourse that we repeatedly have every other quarter? Yeah, like I think that there are, um, I think that at the end of the day, especially as it relates to Okay. I feel like there's like an inside joke that I'm missing. <laughs> but look, I, I want to cook. No, but. No, you, no, it ain't for you to cook. Let me tell you what, real quick, because he ready. Because I like that he made it. It was a man that said it and not a woman. So I want y'all to go, I, I ain't got no problem. I know what your deal is. I know you personally. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> <laughs> I heard a man. Jesus. <laughs> I know you are. Okay? I'm ready. My Lord God <laughs> Almighty. So I Jesus. heard a man of God who's been married for 10 years. 10 years. That's wisdom. So That's how wisdom. How about we sit back and let him cook for a little bit? That's wisdom. You're let's right. see what he got to say a little bit. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. Wow. All right. <laughs> We've been, we've been here for a while. Okay, so so <laughs> so let me let me make sure I'm understanding your question correctly. What you're saying okay. is um, basically the correlation between women desiring a man with a certain level of like financial status or stability, and people being opposed to that paradigm. Yes. Yeah, honestly, I'm going to keep it a stack with you. Like, I feel like, um, once again, there are a lot of things that are contextual. So we're living, in a, we're living in a different day and age, honestly, you know, to where when me and Amanda got married, we were in college. So it was assumed we were going to be broke. Like, that was assumed. Like, I got, we, we got married. I was 21. She was 20. We couldn't even go to... We, we did a, a, a honeymoon at the Gaylord Texan and couldn't even go to the piano bar because she was underage. Like, like we were kids. Um, and we have seen each other through a lot of ups and downs. We have seen each other through, like, food stamps and, like, what was that, 2018? 2018 was on food stamps and in our first year of business and made $43,000 of gross income in our business, $27,000 net, while we were living in Atlanta. And then last year we made over half a million. And so it's like, but, we, but it's, been a lot, it's been a lot of ups and downs and a lot of dips. And so what I would say is that you don't have to, you don't have to, um, when someone makes a decision on who they're gonna marry, ain't nobody else waking up in bed with y'all. Ain't nobody else in those conversations with y'all when y'all are looking at your Bank of America account or your Chase account and y'all trying to figure things out. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just keeping it a stat. And so I think that people have the um, right to want what they want. And based off of what they want, there may be a lower, a smaller pool of what it is that they want. And there are some people who are, of the, there's, a, there's a phrase in business that says you can't make demands if you're not in demand. And so there are some people who believe that that is applicable in the, the dating marriage scene pool. What I would say is this, it's like you can want and do exactly what you want to do, but like you have to understand that based off of what you may be looking for, you are going to be, it's all about supply and demand, right? It's like, the, 
like the, the house and, you know, Zillow or whatever, like the house goes to the highest bidder, right? Like, you know, and so you just have to know, like, what you're competing against. Like, I'm thinking about houses right now, like, and what's happening in Dallas? And I was just like, yo, you had people who was like, oh, yeah, I'm a first-time home buyer, three and a half percent. And then you got people from Cali looking at the same house, and they come over and they say, oh, we're buying it all cash, and we're going to put $50,000 over asking. Yeah. Well, there's one house. They're going to go with the better offer, you know? So I just think that having very realistic, like uh, having uh, more so, not realistic expectations, but just more so self-awareness of the landscape is important. But you can have self-awareness without compromising that what you want. Thank you. That, that's, that's all I had. That's all. Good. I have nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> Let that marinate. Uh-huh. Wow. Stick that in your pipe and smoke, smoke it. it. <laughs> this mic is kind of heavy. But, <laughs> but my, my question is, is, it's pretty much the follow-up question that I had for last week. And going back to basically talking about um, purpose individually. So like as a woman, you know, I don't want to have to change my ambitions just for the sake of saying, hey, I want to get married. Now I'm also, I also know what scripture says about submission, submitting to your husband and things of that thing and how extensive that goes. Certain things you're going to have to just make a compromise in. But when it comes to... Um, financials, things like that. If I am going to walk in my purpose in its fullness, it's going to take a financial increase. Yep. It's going to take certain types of things that you're going to have to do um, in both parties to make sure that you are meeting what God needs for you. Mm. So if I'm able to expedite that process through something, gifts that the Holy Spirit gives me, you know, if I am truly walking in purpose, I know that my husband, along that way, my personal path and journey, we will cross each other's paths okay. and be able to mesh. Yeah. So in that sense, that's been my biggest thing, and that's what I've been putting out. That's what I've consistently have said. Sure. But when I see conversations, especially outside, even from Christian men, I rarely hear the purpose conversation, and it kind of, it kind of strikes me a certain type of way because I feel like if we are so busy focused on the financial piece of the relationship where does the purpose come in like the purpose is money at this point sure yeah. it's, 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 it's a lot legacy over it's, it's luxury over Sorry. legacy a lot of luxury over legacy a lifestyle over legacy yes you know yeah. it's, like, it's like hey how are we gonna live um, what type of lifestyle can we have what type of luxuries can we enjoy and not what type of things can we build and create for the future. Right. Yeah. Right. And I'm sorry. I think I may have missed the question. So what is what was that? What was the question? Well, it, my question basically is is that it's it's two question. it's two questions. Okay. So the ambition piece and as well as like this is kind of like um do you believe that if a woman makes more money than a man it makes her less attractive? <laughs> I don't think that. Um, I don't think that. I, I, but, I, but I believe that there are, just certain, uh, there are just certain dynamics that you'll have to consider, right? So, like, do you, regardless of how much money either of you make, do you believe our money is our money? And roles don't change because of whoever makes the most. Roles don't change, right? Ah! No, no, no. Head of the household, that don't change. Okay. That's what right, 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 right. That's what I was gonna say because because it's just like if I'm over here making bread, or if you're, you're from a woman's standpoint, if you're over here making bread, and somebody got to pick up the kids from school, 
then like, homie, you got to pick up the kids from school. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, yeah. uh, you know, so I think that there's, I think that it, it, it would take a very, uh, it would have to take um, in many ways, like a very secure man and a, very, and a, and a man who like, that's not like a, a value of theirs some, uh, as much. Um, I don't think that it makes a woman less attractive. Um, I don't think I don't, I don't think that personally, but um, go ahead. But the claims that I hear, especially like coming from like the red pill community and that conversation is that she's more masculine behavior or more dominant. Right. OK, so my question then. And that's a whole con another conversation within itself. So my question would be, um, do you do you aspire to have a spouse that ascribes to the red pill philosophy? then it becomes inconsequential, you know? Like whenever I was, um, <clears throat> I remember one time I, I like saw this article and I can't remember what it was about, but like it was something about like children and you know, like these injustices and stuff like that. And then I like click on the article and I realized like, oh, it's from like a parody source. You know what I mean? Like this isn't even real, right. you know what I mean? So like, <laughs> like, so like you have to consider the source of the information that you're receiving. Like because if you don't consider the source then you will believe a reality and maybe even be tempted to ascribe to a philosophy that isn't even what you want to begin with. You can make less money, end up with somebody from that community, and still be miserable. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't think that that's I don't I don't think that within the context of the way that I think um, that like that like the amount of money that you make should really matter all that much. Um, and I don't think and I do believe that the the great part is that you don't wake up one day and get married. Like mm -hmm. not if you're in your right mind. And so. Like, that person who you ultimately end up with will know your ambitions. They will know your calling. And you will make a decision based on your calling and purpose on if this person is going to be winning your sales or a parachute holding you back. Yeah. And I think Indeed. The men, the men that she's talking about, too, like, they, found their, they find their value in how much money they actually made. Sure. And so if they if they find a woman money, they, status and attention, them, then it's like, yeah, um, I don't find value here. I can't even present value here because you make more than I do. Yeah, for sure. But the thing is, but what they don't realize is that like reaping and sowing is so much more than financial. Like like if you just if you realize who your wife is <laughs> <laughs> like, like, if you realize that your wife and like the financial, if she does make a bunch of money, mm -hmm. that that is only one small part of it, yeah. Yeah. then what you'll realize is that you can sow things in her and belief in her yeah. that will actually reap different levels of fruit and harvest in y'all's life that goes even beyond the, beyond the financial. In fact, what will happen is this, if you are actually mature, you will see your wife and yourself as collaborative and not competitive. And the less that you worry about competing against her, the more that she will likely speak into you to help you elevate and go to the next level yourself. And so, like, and so I think that, like, some, so many times, like, people look at, like, the initial thing, but it's just like, yo, if you only understood, and what was your name? Cassidy. Cassidy. Everybody give it up for Cassidy. Like, if you, like, if you understand that in 10 years, your life could literally look completely different. In 10 years, you may not look the same way you look. She may not look the same way she looks. In 10 years, she, she may have had this high paying job and then she gets laid off. In 10 years, she becomes a, a, a mom and now she, she feels called to like stay at home. And you know what I mean? Yeah. But if in the meantime, you're like feeling some type of way about things, then it's just like, first off, like 
understand that it goes way beyond financial. And then second off, like if if it really matters that much to you and y'all are collaborating together, then make more money. Secureth thine bag. People like people are people believe a pipe dream that money it's just gonna come out, oh, I'm believing God for money. You know what I mean? But the reality is that money is correlated directly to the skills that you have. There is not a heart surgeon in the United States that makes $70,000 a year. Because their skills demand that they make more. Like they don't, they like, they, they, like they, they don't make that, you know? And so it's just like, huh, if you are making less, that's the time to get curious. Yeah. What skills does she have that you don't have? Mm -hmm. What are ways that maybe y'all can grow in these skills together? Yeah. What skills have you yet to develop that make you feel like you can't earn the income that you're called to earn? Like, yeah, like you can't just believe, oh, because I want, like, you have to have actual skills that demand you deserve that which you ultimately desire. Yeah. My bad. If you gave me six hours to cut a tree, I'm going to spend the first four sharpening the axe. Right. And I was like, there's a lot of people right now swinging with dull axes, and they're not they're sharpening their skill sets in these areas to bring value to whatever they're doing. So I just thought that was Yeah, bad. most definitely. And if I was cutting down that same tree, especially if you're a collaborative with the wife, then, with the wife, then I would actually spend the first three hours sharpening the axe, and then I give her an axe, and I take an axe, and we start chopping together. You just like cheat code. Dude. You never know who might come to the pod. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my MJ in the building. I think for me, uh, the quick. Oh, my name is Noah. What's up, Noah? Yeah, what's going on? Uh, the question that I wanted to ask you and get into was: I think oftentimes in the Christian community, marriage is almost like an idol, and it's seen as like need to have this thing once you're in it it's so beautiful and so nice and sure I'm, I, I believe that and I'm pursuing that in my own personal life but for you especially because you guys are so young like what would you say are some things that you had to learn like when you first got in or like you wish you learned before um, getting into marriage um, yeah if that makes sense before I got into marriage what are some things that I wish I knew and wish I had learned I wish I would have learned more about um, things in my wife's like past that would cause triggers that ultimately you only learn a lot of those things through experience because some those may be things that she didn't even realize that she had when we first got married, but it's just like, um, for instance, there may be an area of vulnerability and transparency to where I'm like, oh, I want to go here with you. But she doesn't want to go there because it reminds her of something from the past. And it's not that she doesn't want to not be my best friend. It's just that this conversation affects her in a completely different way than it affects me. And I would have understood that as such and not been like, oh, like, she don't, she, you know, this is why I don't talk to my homies. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, well, well, I can't take that specific situation or that specific, like, realm and then impute that on the other 95% of conversations that we will be able to have in vulnerability and transparency that would go just fine. You know? So I think that I would have learned that. I think I would have learned uh, about just how to communicate the feelings that I was feeling before and not uh, I, just not being a people pleaser, you know, because I, 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 I'm just the type of person where I'm just like, you know, I'm going to put the team on my back. You know, it is what it is. I, I'll just suppress the feelings and just like go. Um, but I realized that communicating things um, just helps me feel better. And I didn't know that that was something that I needed to learn. Um, what else would I would, what else would I say? I would say too that like intentionality is really important. Um, like with date nights and things like that, um, they become uh, vital, you know? And then I would also say like, understand like the importance of having like a therapist because there were times in my life where I didn't have a pastor even though I had a pastor, and 
because of that, there were things that what I would have otherwise revealed to a pastor, I revealed to my wife when in reality, I should have just brought that to a therapist. And like that therapist could have helped me work through things and all of the rawness of it before I brought it back to my wife, not just cleaned up, but in a way that is actually more accurate to how I actually felt. Because I'm a verbal processor, so, so I'll just be talking and then, you know, you said this, you said that. I don't even remember saying that. I was just trying to get it all out of my system, right? So I would say those things um, are, are just a few. And then, um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what I would say. I think my, my second and last question would be, so having that all in mind, what are some things that, uh, like either advice, oh, hands, okay, Odell. <laughs> What, what are some, like, advice or messages that you received going into marriage? He had to do me like that. I'm going to keep his that. He, <laughs> he said, he, he literally was looking at the question. He said, word. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I've got this. <laughs> what, are, what are some uh, uh, advice and messages that you received when you were first going into marriage? That, like, when you got into marriage, you were like, actually, that was whack. I should have not listened to that. Um, like, do you have anything like that? It's okay if you don't, but I'm just, just curious. No, that's, that's great. Let me try to think about some of the advice that I got in marriage. One of the advice that, uh, some of the advice that I got in marriage was like, try to lovingly outserve one another. Um, that ended up being really good advice. Um, that ended up being good advice, but it was incomplete. <laughs> Meaning, if you feel like you are lovingly outserving that person a lot, then you need to ensure that you also make your needs known. That's good. And it's not that you are making your needs known to a person who has been trying to withhold from you. It's just that they may not have been thinking about it. They may not love in the same way that you love because that phrase is very acts of service, love language oriented, which was mine, which is why it resonated with me so much, but it wasn't like words of affirmations oriented. It wasn't like try to lovingly out compliment one another because if that were the case, then I would get dusted, you know? So um, I would say that a lot of advice, um, so I I'm trying to think about like, maybe like people who have opinions, not advice, but more so opinions on like traditional gender roles and things like that. It's just like, you know, when we were broke and making $47,000 a year with like, three people in the household and like living on food stamps in Atlanta, then it's just like, yes, I actually really do need you to cook. And, and, and during that season, Amanda was a stay at home mom with our son. I was going out to work and she would cook dinner and like she did an amazing job in that season. Um, so now it was a lot of like taco soup, like, Chicken, potatoes, broccoli, like it, it, was, it, was, it, it, it was, it was, it was, it was quinoa, you know, or whatever. And, but, um, powdered milk. Yeah, well, it wasn't that bad. It oh, wasn't that bad. bad. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, like, don't play us. Powdered milk. Powder milk. Powder milk. Man. Powder milk. milk <laughs> with the cornflakes. Is that the side of the struggle? Power milk? Is, this, is it, that's the side of the struggle? I don't know. Powdered milk is the struggle. Powdered milk? No, bro. It's literally like it's in a box, and all you got to do is like pour water in it, and you put it in your Look bowl, in box, and then yeah. cereal. It'll, it'll never go bad. Milk. So that's formula. That's, that's, that's yeah, how, it's formula. It's grown folk formula. Nah. It was horrible. Nah, you tripping. <laughs> nah, you tripping. If your milk say just add water, <laughs> that's kind of crazy. I ain't going to lie. That's exactly what we did. You know what I mean? That's kind of wild. That's exactly what we did. Indeed. <laughs> I would, I would say, I would say, but to answer your question, <laughs> it was so hard. Uh, come on, he said chamoy tahin, and okay. He said, "Come on." <laughs> Let me say this: I will say that I didn't receive a lot, like I didn't receive a lot of like bad advice, but even the good advice that I received normally required more nuance. That's good. To it, and there were subtleties within it that became clearer as I actually went through the practice of actually being married. Yeah. Oh, 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 here's some, good, here's some good advice. That what works for you and your spouse may not work 
for somebody else and their spouse. Indeed. Which is why even whenever I talk, you notice, I, I mean, I don't make a lot of blanket statements. I'm like, well, let me ask this. Let me ask that. There's context, nuance, subtlety. Because what works for these people may not work for you. That's good, bro. And if you compare yourself to these people, you will cause resentment that don't need to be there. Because, like, you have these expectations. Disappointment is just unmet expectations. That is the definition of disappointment. It's when my, what I expect, it is the gap between expectations and experience. If I'm expecting this and experiencing that, then that gap is disappointment. <laughs> and so, like, that's what I would. <laughs> I, I didn't want to push it because it was, it was so pure. <laughs> so, so that's what I would say, Noah. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, bro. Young Mike. Anybody else? Come on, Mike. Indeed. One of my favorite people to talk about dance with. White Mike. <laughs> Let's go. I was just going to ask, am I allowed to be here? Yeah, Black it's white men Mike. talk. <laughs> Why y'all disincluding? <laughs> just saying. Dia. Yeah. I got like a lot of my people in here too. I got a lot of accountability in here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I, I like what you were saying too. Uh, tell me your name, Noah, right? Um, like the, the difference between expectation and expectancy. Uh, uh, yeah, but, but I heard expectancy, right? On the other side of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your expectation is like, you know, you better. And uh -huh. if you don't, ah, re, 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 yeah. You know, as opposed to, you know, expectancy is. I'm going to lay it out there. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, very good. Very, yeah, very yeah, good. Very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, um, you know, uh, in my experience, uh, my wife and I, we are in the same boat. I married my best friend, uh, even though I didn't like her at first, like at all, uh, because she was Latino and uh, she wasn't trying to date anybody. Neither was I, but like she had an attitude anyway. I digress. Um, the, the long, the long sh uh, uh, short story of this was the fact that my, I, I talked with my pastor, and, and I was, at that time, I was trying to date somebody else in my church. And my pastor looked at me and said, why? Stop. And I was like, oh, snap, I should stop. And he goes, here's what I want you to do. I want you to write a list of everything you want in a wife and, and, and make it very detailed. So I did everything. And, and for me, dark hair, dark eyes, you know, athletic build, manicured nails. I like somebody with good makeup. They love Jesus more than me, you know, kind of fiery in their attitude, but, uh, you know, freaking the sheets type of thing. So um, make sure and put everything in my detail. And he said, okay, all right. Make your request known, Bishop. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. Let put it on the list. Let me tell you something. And I knew exactly what Put it what on you it. Ask, see, say, knock. Come on. In your lap, running over. <laughs> In your lap. <laughs> stop it, stop it. Stop it. Let me tell you something. Listen. Listen. Wow. Listen. Oh. Listen. Press hey, down, you. shake it together. Press down, shake it together. <laughs> Take it together, hey, run it over. My Take it. Hey, yeah. I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, so, so once we made the list, he said, he said, okay. Now look at the list of the of the of the woman that you made. I was like, oh yeah, it's a great list, the greatest list ever. And he said, now, what kind of man would that woman want to marry? And I was like, oh my goodness. And I knew that I wasn't there. And he goes, now your mission is to become that man. Yeah. Right? And so we burned the paper. Not, not the new age church type of burn the paper. He just didn't want me to go look through it again. You know? So, so we, we left the house, right? Three years later, I meet my wife at Bible college. And the minute that I knew that she met my list, I ran from it. Because if I kill it, and God resurrects it, it'll never die. And so I killed it, and, uh, you know, I killed it a little too good because she wasn't trying to talk to me for, like, two weeks. Uh, but then after that, we met. So uh, uh, I guess, uh, and I am coming around to a question. What do you mean by kill it? What do you mean by kill it? Because I'm, I'm confused. Okay, okay, so check this out. Check, okay, excellent, excellent question. Excellent I, I, question. I was waiting on question. more content. I apologize. I wanted ambiguity in that statement. Like, thank you for asking a direct question. 
We got a white man in here talking about killing. Yeah. He's like, oh, oh, I killed that. MJ, you, MJ what did we? That. You got to make it that, right? I'm like. That means something different than Gen Z, sir. I'm like. I, I had like hey, six years yeah. I could have flown out right there, but then you'd have to explain like, yeah, 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 for why sure. I'm here. For anyway, sure. And I'm bald. Oh, snap. Oh, Skinhead. Oh, yeah. Watch out. Watch out. Right, so check it, check it. Um, when, 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 you, when you know you're not supposed to get into something physical with anybody who you are crushing on at the time, right? Okay. Uh, so at that time, I just stopped talking. And any time there was a conversation, I was like, look, I, I, I don't think that we should continue to interact because I'm starting to feel something here. So I was openly communicating to her at the time. And so she laughed in my face and said, OK, well, I don't want to make you feel any kind of way. Literally in front of all of our friends, they all started laughing and this, that and the other. And I was like, that probably did the job right there. That probably did it. And so she wouldn't talk to me. Like, she would, like, stare a hole through me, and then I'm like, hey, how's it going? And she would walk away. And so that was me killing the game, you know? And so later on, and, and long story short, like, she went through um, uh, a really, really personal issue and was, was really in a painful place and, and needed a job. We were both at Bible College. Her funds had run out. She needed a job. She was a cosmetologist. I worked in Uptown West Village at a church, and I said, look, Carpool with me. I'm going to drop you off somewhere, and you just go and apply for jobs. After I get off work, I'm going to come pick you back up. She got the job. That's how we became the way that we were is because I was her ride, right? Now, the first month, she rode in the back seat. Man, this ain't driving, Miss Daisy. You better get up in the front seat. What's wrong with you? She was like, I'm obeying school rules because school rules says you can't be alone in a car with a female. Uh, and they had to ride in the back seat and all this that Steve and I, you know, it's, yeah, it's real. B- Bible college, Bible, Bible college. college back then. Bible college, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't even wear jeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah for real, for real. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, for yeah. For real, that's yeah. the actual thing. Back then you couldn't that's wear jeans. That's the thing. That was she wearing baggy clothes, hair pulled back, no makeup with thick glasses. And then when we came in a relationship, when she came back from Chicago, she had her hair pulled to the side, curly, braided, all makeuped up with tight clothes. And I was like, oh, snap, this is, I'm not going to last. Lord, we need to get married fast because, you know. That kind of thing. Um, my question is, um, yeah, 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 let's move, let's move into question time. Because I, I really, I, I really want to, uh, outstanding counsel. And I could just tell that you have been in this uh, on purpose That's good. Uh, with your wife. You know, th- there's, a, there's a difference when somebody talks about wisdom, right? And, and kind of, you know, you, you, know, you got to go out there and give 110%. You want to do good. You hope you do good. And, and that's what all we hear from most of these guys. But uh, to find somebody who is... I mean, you are knee deep in your relationship and, and the expression of joy is coming out and how you give wisdom. Thank so you. I just want to say thank you. Oh, thank you. That's love. Heart, That's love. That's love. That's love. Thank you. So after uh, my wife and I have been married for 13 years, right? Again, cou- counsels. Uh, what, what would you, uh, I would like for you to speak to the counselor portion of that as it pertains to a married couple together. Um, what, number one, uh, did you go through that? And two, what was your purpose whenever you, if it was an incident before and say, look, we need counseling, or was it, you know what, we could get better if we just had a third party, you know, advocate That's good, Mike. saying, you know, just want to say, speak on that a little bit. So what I believe you're asking me is how did we navigate the initial prompting of like going into marriage counseling together as a couple? Is that what you're asking? I want to make sure I answer your question. No, absolutely. Uh, uh, that'd be great. Or as an individual as well? Or no? no, no uh, uh, indiv- uh, from, I understood where he was at it in an individual basis, right? Um, I just felt like there was some am- ambiguous, uh, like, did you do it with your wife? Got it. And you're talking specifically about us receiving counseling and therapy versus us giving counseling and therapy. Absolutely. Got it. Perfect. Thank you. So, um, yeah, so the way that it happened was in 2020, um, my wife and I were, like, part of this, like, crazy, weird church split thing that happened in Atlanta. And um, there were other ancillary factors along with that that just put my wife in a really dark place. And so she was like, I need a therapist. And so when she went to her therapist, she went to a couple of therapists, and they weren't very good, and then ended up with a woman who was actually a really good therapist that helped to kind of like 
bring her along. Um, I think, if, I, I, actually, I think Preston uh, recommended, I think it's his therapist. It's, it's his therapist. Uh, no, not Preston Sprinkle, Preston Perry, Perry yes. Okay. And so um, I think that he like, gave us like, uh, this therapist, or gave Amanda this therapist, and she was walking through. And then I think in her personal therapy journey, I wasn't in therapy, um, she had like, kind of like hit a little bit of a lid. And this therapist was like, well, there's another therapist who I'm very close with, who I think you could be a good fit for, and I can kind of like hand you off, transition you to her. Like she had gotten Amanda to a good point, but like there was kind of just a little bit of a lid. Amanda gets with this therapist. This woman is incredible. So incredible that Amanda tells her best friend about it. Amanda's best friend starts using this therapist. So incredible, she tells her husband. Her husband loves it. Then she, they tell their other friend. And then before I know it, I had like seven or eight people, I knew like seven or eight people using this woman specifically. And I was just like, oh, dang, I've always been kind of interested in therapy. I've been, I've been like, <laughs> but I didn't want to, but like one of the, like, I don't know what is the opposite of a love language. I guess it's a, an ick, you know? Uh, but it's just like, I, my ick is incompetence. Like, I don't, like, I need you to, I gotta, if I'm talking to someone, like, you gotta keep up with me. Because I use, I use complex theories, like I have things going on in my head, like I'm not trying to dumb down my language, you know, like I'm trying to like, yeah. I'm trying to flow, Get you know? Here. Yeah, for sure. And this woman seemed like she could. And so then I met with her and then um, <laughs> she was incredible. And um, me and Amanda have only gone to joint therapy with her once. And that was in April from an issue that had kind of like, just caused some like bitterness between us. Um, but it was like suppressed bitterness. So it wasn't like we were like barking at each other, but it was just like we didn't feel as close. You know what I mean? And I knew why, but like Amanda didn't know why, but I still wasn't good at expressing my feelings at that point in time. I've gotten way better this year, exponentially better. And so um, that's what the therapy process looked like for us. It was kind of like on an individual basis, I would go to the therapist and I would like talk, like, I, by the grace of God, because you can't choose this, but like, I, by the grace of God, was raised in a Christian home with two loving black parents who loved each other. They've been married for 30 years. Uh, like, they, like, they just, it's, that is an anomaly in the black community. I recognize that. That is not something that I chose. It was just something by the grace of God that I had. So I don't have like a lot of like, like of the traditional trauma things that like, people go to like therapists for, but I do have things where it's just like, I need a processor. Like I need someone who I can just like speak to without the risk of hurting their feelings. Yeah. And so like, that's how I kind of use it. Like whenever I preach uh, at church on Sundays, uh, on a Sunday, like I will hire my therapist for an hour to just listen to me. So that that way, like she can give me her feedback and like we can just, like, I just go to her with, like, things, I'm like, I need to, there's, there's just stuff I need to get done versus, like, I need to be in, like, a program. But in the, but there's only, like I said, only been one time when we've gone together, uh, but it was abundantly helpful, and I would recommend therapy to anyone. I'm always hesitant on, like, recommending people to my current therapist, because I'm just, like, I don't want her to, like, get too busy, and then, like, if I need her, yeah, she's yeah, like, it's selfish. But it's selfish, but but she but she is but she is absolutely incredible. She's in Atlanta, uh, and yeah, she's so that's how that looked. Uh, uh, last question uh, uh, to back yeah. backtrack. You said your wife when it was in a dark place. Yeah, and that's the reason why. It, did that dark place affect you or your marriage in any way? I think that it always affects the marriage. From uh, it affected the, it didn't the dark place didn't have anything to do with me, um, and so it affected the marriage just from like a capacity to handle it like I just was like I don't think that I can be the husband that you need I don't think that as your husband I can give you what you need in this season therefore I am willing to invest money in a therapist who is trained to help navigate you through this season uh. because it's going to be 
because I just recognize I'm very self-aware. Like, I'm a very self-aware person. Like, I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. And so it's like, I know that I am not good at this yet. Therefore, in the meantime, you still need healing. So let me, like, invest. So that's how that works. Can I ask both of y'all a question before you get out? Okay. Um, so, because I still feel for my friends that are, like, stuck or feeling, like, stuck. You know, so, like, in, in those marriages, in those relationships where you see people that don't have what I'm seeing is the luxury of being in love with the person that you love, you know, what encouragement can you give them or what advice or what outside perspective can you grant to them as two men who claim and, 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 and proudly say like, man, my wife is my best friend. Cause it's a lot of men and a lot of women out there that are hurting, you know what I'm saying? And feeling like, well, we started this commitment and because God put a stamp on it, now we have to go through this, you know what I'm saying? And need to go through this. And even though we don't like each other, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, I think that it comes down to a couple of things. First, a shared objective goal. Like, I call it the touchdown line. So when you watch a football game, the cheerleaders know where the touchdown line is. The, the quarterback knows. The receivers know. The defense knows. Everybody knows where the touchdown line is. So, like, you have to figure out the objective standard for what both parties actually want. Because what if one party wants the two to be best friends and the other party doesn't? Well, then now, like, y'all have two different touchdown lines. Y'all have two different goals. One is discontent and the other is complacent. And in, that, in those scenarios, you actually need probably an outside third party counselor, therapist or someone like that to, like, figure all of those things out. Because you two figuring those things out together are probably going to create emotions and, um, and, and you just won't think with the same level of mental acuity than you would otherwise. Um, and then beyond that, uh, I would say like if you guys have a shared goal, first off, establishing that is important. And then uh, what you appreciate, appreciates. And so... <laughs> I'm marinate. And so, and so, what you appreciate appreciates meaning, like when you sow seeds of appreciation, when you, like, when you add something to the relationship that may not be there. Like, for instance, like, um, growing up, I always thought that Nike was like the best sports brand. So whenever I like started making money, I wore Nike every day because I like it's performance wear. My wife liked Nike, but she also likes me in like grown up clothes too, you know? And so like now I, and so I was just like, you know, I made the decision, oh, when I turn 30, I'm gonna spend, you know, a few thousand dollars on like uh, some shirts, some, some sh shoes, some whatever, you know what I mean? Blah, 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 blah. She started looking at me different, treat me a little different. I said, oh, if I would have known this from the beginning, I would have, I would have, I would have, I would have, I thought, I thought that these were, this was nice to have, but like, oh, that like, sparked your eye, it created something new. That's good. Are you going on a new experience together, right? A vacation is cheaper than a divorce. A vacation is cheaper than a divorce. You're trying to save money. You're trying to save money and not like take your wife out when in reality, if you don't, then in the next 18 months, you're going to be, you're going to be paying a lot more. Splitting things. Um, a date night is, cheap, is about the same price as a therapy session. And so it's like, when was the last time you went on a date? Like, those are things that factor into appreciation. Um, and so when you have a shared goal and a shared, like, objective standard, and then you appreciate that which will appreciate, then over time, it's going to produce fruit. Yeah, I would say that, I mean... Outstanding, outstanding counsel. Um, I would say that uh, just using the touchdown line, right? That uh, fantastic idea. Like I'm, I'm definitely, I'm biting that for real. 
Um, but on the flip side of that, if one or the other does not trust them within the goal sharing, then they'll only share a portion of themselves in it, which means that you're going head first into a goal that they're only going to the 50, 60 yard line. And we're trying to hit, we're trying to hit this goal line and they've given up back then, you know, and then once, you know, before you know it, you're looking back and they're still there wondering why you're not going back catering to why they're feeling sorry for themselves back there. When really it's that thing that you did. That, that they never got over, they never brought up, and they're never open enough to talk about it because all you do is get mad, right? There's, there's, a, there's a conflict in, in a marriage that a lot of people just don't understand and don't talk about. And the guys that say that they're not best friends with their wife is because one of two things. Please don't meddle into my personal life because it's mine. You don't have the code to my phone right? Uh, type, type stuff, right? And then on the flip side is, I really don't care to be your friend. Do what I tell you to do, right? So now you're looking at control at a high level. Like you, and when you think about a, a really strong-minded businessman, yourself aside, of, of course, you know, a strong-minded businessman really doesn't want people you know, throwing a monkey wrench into something that they worked incredibly hard for, especially if it's their spouse. Because I'm really trying not to fight with you about something I've worked so hard for to see you tear it down in two seconds. Right. And it's, it's only because you, you they believe that it's, it's lack of intelligence. Even my wife, you know, like um, uh, in certain situations, you know, I, I'm I was told by God to switch my my career. I was multiple six figures in a cybersecurity environment. Right. God said, I want you working with kids. I told him, no, you know, kids ain't paying us money for real. <laughs> no, thank you. But he bothered me for like seven months. I finally. All right. All right. If you want me to do it, I'll do it. But you, I need your help. Two days later, they terminated my contract. I said yes to God. Two days later, terminated. I was like, oh, you were serious. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me call this dude back for real. Now, now that's hindsight. Right. And we struggled for two years when I transitioned out of that. And then my wife just continued to just push me and push me. Baby, I trust you. I trust that you hear from God. I will not, I will not leave you. I'm by your side. And she was rocking my world that whole time. So I'm thinking I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread, making no money at all. We sold our house, didn't make a single bit in, in profit at all. There was no, there was no equity. Um, long story short. But now, fast forward, God kept telling my wife, just wait, just wait, just wait. And she kept telling me this. And so I was like, okay, we waiting, we waiting. We're going to grind this out. I'm going to do the best I can. It just looked like failure. And then here we are sitting in front. We're back at six figures. Because now she's, she's working full time. I had a fear of her working full time. She would leave me. Two, two, two girls before her did that very thing, Right three times divorced since then, she, she's three times, and then my wife, she was like, I'm not leaving you. I'm here for this. I'm here for this all day, right? So imagine that same thing. We had the same touchdown line, right? We're supposed to help kids. And now we, you know, we both, everybody, I mean, I wouldn't say everybody, but there's a portion in here that has been walking with me and knows my personal life deeply on this side of the room. Hey, how y'all doing on that side? But <laughs> But I'm saying, like, even the street, street knows a bit of my, my personal, you know, testimony. But if there's no trust given, you're probably not going to get a whole lot back, you know. And then if trust is given, once it's established and you hit it, like, everybody knows when, okay, man, I really trust this person. And I think they trust me. Then, then it's the touchdown line. It's a touchdown line after that. Amen. Amen. Indeed. Hey, we got, we, we going to do one more because I mean, wow. we got to honor my man's time. Wow. You know, he got to get back to his kiddos. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Quick question. You feel me? Kiddos long. Oh, he good. Hey, long. I'm not long. He's like, <laughs> get back to him, man. We got one more hour. Wow. You good, you good, you good, you good. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to ask a question because I'll lose it if I don't ask first. And then I'll give context as to where it came from. So how would you give advice to young adults as they look look for love? And that question came from me, me and a friend of mine were just having a conversation about relationships, friendships, and realizing that in our time, a lot of people are having friendships and 
treating people based off of trauma. We had the same trauma similarity. And so now that carries over into relationships and how we look for partners or dating. And so then you have people who find themselves in relationships because they share the same rejection. They share the same insecurity. And they're going into relationships prematurely, not because they, kind of because they aren't ready, but also they're trying to love through the lens from where their heart condition is at that moment in time and not from where their heart will be when they are healed. Yes. Um, you know what's interesting is many times when, when people ask me advice on how to do something, it's oftentimes easier to like play devil's advocate, map out the antithesis of it, and then reverse engineer it. And so what do I mean by that? You're saying, how should I look for a partner? If I were you or anyone, because things are gonna be different for every person, I would say, if I were to choose the worst spouse possible, what are the qualities that I would have? I would for sure make sure that they are an atheist, like a secular humanist that like didn't have any moral code or morality, right? I would for sure make sure that like they were operating out of their trauma, you know, so, so that that way, you know, once we got together, we built unhealthy bonds, you know. I would for sure, if you know you're this type of person, I would for sure make sure they're a person who like like doesn't have like a desire to have like a family or interact with my family, you know? I, so I would actually like think about all of the negative things and then be like, okay, well, given that those were all the negative things, like what are the opposites? And like those opposites will reveal a list to you that is congruent with that which you should be searching for. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, you want to close this out, Tony? <laughs> go ahead. It was a question or it was a statement? Oh, okay. good. Excellent. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Tony usually closes us out with a oh, yeah. little bit of thing he wrote. Talk to us, sir. Bring your notes up here, brother. What's Gucci? Thank you, homie. I be letting I be letting Jerry revise my stuff now. Nah. Even <laughs> he back like, there man, chat chat me, GPT. Me up. <laughs> so I, I said I said don't rush anything. Pray to find the individual who loves you for you, that pushes you to be the best person that you can be, and it needs to be mutual. The person that sees the God in you. Don't get into a situation that God has to remove you from in order for his purpose to be complete Ooh. and for him to get the glory because he's going to get that regardless. Baron, Are y'all listening to this? He going in. Oh, okay. He going in. Yeah, he going in. Oh, does he just always do this? He does this. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like... <laughs> it's, like it's like, where's the I, I was like, y'all are not giving Tony <laughs> the same thing y'all were giving me. <laughs> but I realize now that y'all are just used to Tony. Okay. Sorry. Continue, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Marrying your best friend is marrying into each other's purpose. Nobody that tries to either disintegrate or keep you and your potential or what God has placed in you minimal is for you. Uh, Jared added this, like the one person who allows you to sin. Give me your credit, bro. Best friends help break you into what is beautiful, help mold you into a jar that flows of water for others while yet filling you as you do the same for them. Mm. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Black Men Do Talk, where we have overdue That's not conversations from a black man perspective. Deep in this presence, Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Shout out to the audience, audience make some noise. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Shout out to MJ Pittman. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. You know what I'm saying? Y'all tune in, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Spread the word, man. I really feel like we having some God-filled conversations that can lead to some healing and self-improvement and some kingdom building. So make sure y'all share this 
pod you for the people. You feel away. me? You feel me? You feel me? And tune in next week because we got some dope stuff coming in the pipeline. because he called your name. You only stayed because he called your name. You only stayed because he called your name.